ආයුබෝවන් සුබ සන්ධ්‍යාවක් ශ්‍රී ලාංකේය උසස් අධ්‍යාපන ශේෂ්ත්‍රය තුල මහා පෞරක් බඳු ඊටමත් ප්‍රෞඩ ඉතිහාසයකට උරුමකම් කියන ශ්‍රී ලංකාවේ අංක 1 විශ්ව විද්‍යාලය කොළඹ විශ්ව විද්‍යාලය පාසල් දිවියෙන් විශ්ව විද්‍යාල දිවියට පා තබන සෝහසක් ශ්‍රී ලාංකේය සිසු සිසුවියන්ගේ ඒ සුවිසල් බලාපොරොත්තුව කොළඹ විශ්ව විද්‍යාලයට තේරීපත් වීමයි එම අරමුණ සාක්ෂාත් කරගත් අපගේම ආදරණීය සහෝදර සහෝදරියන් පිළිගනු ලබන 2022 23 අධ්‍යන වර්ෂයේ සඳහා වන කොළඹ විශ්ව විද්‍යාලීය විද්‍යාපීඨයේ නම්නීකරණ වැඩසටහනේ දෙවන දිනේ දෙවන අදියරේ සමාරම්භය මෙලෙස සනිටුවන් කරමු විනුක් A very good afternoon to all ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this afternoon session of day 2 of the orientation program for the 22-23 batch of the Faculty of Science University of Colombo and today's session will be dedicated to the Department of Mathematics and the Career Guidance Unit of the Faculty of Science University of Colombo Vishwaya Bhashav Vidya Vishay Dharavan Hadaran Koi Kaatat Lengatu E Apooru Vishay Dharav Ganita Vishay Dharav Ese Nam අද දින නම්නීකරණ වැඩසටහනේ දෙවන දිනේ දෙවන ආදියරේ පළමු භාගයේ වෙන් වන්නේ කොළඹ විශ්වවිද්‍යාල ගණිත දෙපාර්තමේන්තුවටයි ගණිත දෙපාර්තමේන්තුව පිළිබඳව හැඳින් වීමක් සිදු කරමි ඔබ සැම ආමන්ත්‍රණයට මාගේ මේ ගෞරවපූර්ණක ඇරයුම ගණිත දෙපාර්තමේන්තුව අංශ ප්‍රධානී මහාචාර්ය එස් එස් එන් පෙරේරා මැතිඳුන්ටයි And for the introductory session on the Department of Mathematics, let me now invite Professor S. S. N. Pereira, Head of the Department of Mathematics. Sir, over to you. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Department of Mathematics, Colombo. so uh, department of mathematics uh, warmly welcome you to the science community so i think uh, i just of course uh, try to give you a brief introduction of the mathematics and the department of mathematics i think uh, when you hear about the mathematics and the mathematics department uh, couple of questions uh, uh, probably you are having so why uh, why mathematics and the why department of mathematics attached to the faculty of science university of colombo and what you are expecting and what type of things we are planning to provide you right so these are natural questions i think usually when you of course move into the any place so you get the why what so that kind of question so i'll try to actually brief you uh, i try to give you the, like a basic uh, answers for the such a kind of thing then uh, before moving to the those questions uh, if we little bit actually discuss about the, this our history so the department of mathematics uh, history of course goes to 1922 so which mean like that the we are having like a uh, more than 100 years uh, history right so uh, even now the mathematics uh, honors classes were started from early 1922 right so we are now moving in the 1993 so we can you can actually realize that the 101 years of course history having about that that is uh, our honors curriculum right so of course now the present curriculum so went through like uh, so much of uh, revisions but what what i want to actually highlight here so we are the mathematics department in the university system in sri lanka of course you can see like that the now the eigen building so we are when you actually talk about about the even any media talking about that the not only the highest education in sri lanka like a university system or highest education in sri lanka sri lanka so always you can see that this building right so this is actually the symbolic uh, building like a symbolic building to rep uh, represent uh, university education as well as that the higher education system in sri lanka so we are 
placed. Hmm? So we are placed into this icon building. Now, a few ideas about the, this uh, mathematics. Uh, so why mathematics? Of course, now I can give you like uh, three simple answers. So the mathematics provide you broad skill, nature, essential things, right? Why I am telling about the, the broad? So you can realize that the mathematics, hmm, both in art and, and the science, this provide the essential tools for the advancement of many areas, including sciences, engineering, finance, economic, sociology, medicine, almost every place. So that's why it is very broad, right? And why skill? So the mathematics teaches logical and abstract thinking, which is essential to form a sound basis for the learning. So not only that, even the day-to-day -day activities also. The nature. Mathematics lies at its heart hmm, and is a core subject for subject of human thought. Right? So that's why actually the, in any subject area, so you can easily jump because of the, this nature. And essential. So essential mean now in higher education system or even the tertiary education system, any subject, right? So any subject area or any field, it's of course uh, essential thing is the knowledge of the mathematics, right? So even if you are doing accounting, if you are doing economics, if you are doing medicine or any other things, we need, you need to know about that the basic mathematics. So it's essential, right? So you can see like that the mathematics is a broad skill, nature and essential. So then to fulfill the, these things, the Department of Mathematics, University of Colombo, so we provide the wide range, wide range of the services and the courses. First of all, undergraduate degree programs concerning about the your, your sector. So we provide the wide range of uh, undergraduate degree programs. And also the postgraduate degree programs, which is mainly talk about, about the MSCs. So we have a MSc in financial mathematics, MSc in mathematics education, and the two more MSCs are one pipeline, so I do not want to actually talk about, about the much about the, those information. Also the research-based uh, education, MPL and the PhD in the different uh, subject, uh, different component in the mathematics. And also the external degree, which is a BAC in financial engineering and the, some of the services, especially in the extension courses related to the mathematics and the application, right? So I think I explained a little, uh, little bit of the I mean, the, these uh, pro services, except the undergraduate degree program. So the since undergraduate program is important for you, so the next slide, of course, little bit, of course, explain about that, the, what type of, of course, uh, undergraduate degree programs we are offering. So we are offering, mainly we are offering the five honors degree programs, four of our uh, research base. So that means they having the strong research collaboration. One is a BSc Honours in Mathematics, BSc Honours in Applied Mathematics, BSc Honours in Computational Mathematics, BSc Honours in Mathematical Finance, and then BSc Honours in Finance and Insurance, which is the industrial oriented or industrial related degree program. So if I little bit talk about, about the, this degree program, of course, coordinators are here, so they will provide you the more information, but just to, just to complete the, this uh, slide. So the BAC honors in mathematics, which is mainly pure mathematics, it does not mean like that the 100% pure mathematics, but of course, you need to do like a few applied courses also, but it's, it's basically the abstract mathematics, right? In the BAC Honours in Applied Mathematics, so which is mainly the classical applica applica uh, applied mathematics, which including like the, the modern subjects, right? Uh, BAC Honours in the Computational Mathematics, which is uh, sort of kind of like a combination of the applied mathematics, uh, computational and the simulation aspect, and as well as the data science. So which is of course basically the uh, developing the data driven models to take like to take the uh, taking the decision science area and uh, BAC honors in the mathematical finance which is basically 
based on uh, industrial statistics and mathematics, fi mathematical finance intake, so which b talk about about like that the financial mathematics, actuarial mathematics, and the quantitative finance area. BC honors in finance and insurance, with both cater to the physical science and industrial statistics and mathematical finance uh, uh, intake, uh, in intake. So, which is a uh, industry collaboration. Uh, degree programs. So we basically work uh, work with the, this finance and the insurance in that industry in the quantitative finance area. In addition to that, of course, uh, we are we are having some sort of like a collaboration with the IT center. So the IT center uh, providing the one degree program. So but academic component of the, that degree program, of course, comes under Department of Mathematics. So that, of course, you can see in the different color, which is a BSc honors in IT and management. So which basically they talk about, about the information technology and management area. Uh, so the subjects, when you talk about, about subject that we are offering, so Basic uh, pure mathematics, one is a key component area, and the applied mathematics, another key component area. Of course, when you come to the applied mathematics, a pure mathematics, so there are uh, several like a subject algebra, analysis, analysis also the complex analysis, uh, functional analysis, real analysis, so various kind of analysis, and algebra also. Uh, group theory, ring theory, so we mainly abstract mathematics. So when it comes to the applied mathematics, so we have uh, classical applied mathematics like a differential equations, uh, and then also the like a mathematical method, uh, Fourier analysis, that kind of like applied mathematics, and not only that, right? So we of course engage with the new uh, trend, so in introducing the some of the courses of course, here we mentioned about that those things, computational mathematics and the mathematical modeling, those are basically the highly application areas and also combined with the computer science or the computer simulation, computer programming side, and also also the different type of uh, different areas. And in addition to that, of course, financial mathematics and actuarial mathematics, those are also the key subject, especially for uh, industrial statistics and mathematical finance intake. Uh, so we are actually located in the two places, as I mentioned about that the main building is uh, this historical Eigen building. You have seen it in uh, the different media, right? So the another one, of course, uh, we have another uh, three-story building, which is uh, ISN FM lab area. So at the moment, of course, uh, we are occupying the uh, two, uh, two uh, floors, but of course, hopefully, maybe like that, the before ending the, this uh, year, so we will take over the entire building under the mathematics department. So the, our strength, of course, uh, we at the moment, of course, we have uh, 20 uh, academic uh, members. So you can see about that there are some of, of course, I is with me. Uh, so it, basically now they are, of course, uh, expert in the different uh, subject area. Not only that, actually, the, our strength, so we highly co collaborate with the industry. So the various industry uh, expertise also are in our uh, lecture panel. As uh, visiting lecturers, also they are conducting the some of the workshop and also the various type of, of courses, right? Not only them, of course, the, some of the members, our alumina members who are in uh, states and the other countries, so they also involve with us uh, to do the some of the academic activities, research activities, and the, some community activities. Hopefully, like that, our coordinators will provide the more details. Before ending the, this one, just want to, of course, highlight the uh, field of expertise. So when you consider about the pure mathematics, uh, some of the areas, real analysis, complex analysis, functional analysis, and the algebra. So the, even the algebra group theory, uh, the ring theory, the field theory. So we have that uh, expertise. And uh, graph theory, another area. 
and mathematics education is another uh, the strength or another area which we are having so if you look at the applied mathematics it's a vast vast area because it's application so when you see about that the applied mathematics so we have mainly the mathematical modeling so the mathematical modeling especially in the biological medicine and infectious disease area we are so strong not only that of course the quantum computing computational modeling and simulation modeling with the artificial intelligence area so we are so strong and also the quantitative finance actuarial mathematics insurance mathematics so we are also so strong so those are highly innovative you can look at that the highly innovative from theoretical background to the highly practical areas so it's wide areas we are covering so you can find the more details from our website right please go to the mathematics department website then you can get find out the uh, academic members so what uh, academic members and their field of expertise and also the if you move into the faculty website under the undergraduate programs you can find the more details about the, these uh, degree programs and if you move into the uh, postgraduate degree programs you, you can find the masters msc uh, uh, conducted by the department and if you actually move into the postgraduate program research degree of the science you can find the, some of the information regarding the mphil and phd and the research activities conducted by the uh, department of mathematics currently so uh, this is actually just a brief idea about the brief introduction about the department of mathematics at university of colombo so uh, my other members coordinators so they will provide you the specific details regarding the degree programs undergraduate degree programs so before ending the this on behalf of the department of mathematics uh, university of colombo i warmly welcome you to the science community and wish you all the best for the next three years or four years for your life thank you ස්තුතියි මැතිතුමනි එසේම සිහිපත් කළ යුතුයි ඔබට ගණිත දෙපාර්තමේන්තුව පිළිබඳව යම් ගැටලුවක් වෙතොත් කොළඹ විශ්වවිද්‍යාලයේ විද්‍යාපීඨයේ නිල මාධ්‍යක කෙවන ෆොස් මීඩියා අපගේ YouTube පිටුවේ සජීවී විකාශයේ ඩිස්ක්‍රිප්ෂන් හැටි Google ෆෝමය හරහා එම ගැටලුව අපට යොමු කළ හැකි බවත් එසේ නම් ගණිත දෙපාර්තමේන්තුව පිළිබඳව තව දුරටත් ඔබට හඳුන්වා දීමට මගේ මේ ගෞරව පූරක ඇරයුම आचार्य दयाल धर्म सेन मैथि तुम आटाई Uh, for more details regarding the department of mathematics you can forward your questions through the google form which is available in the live chat and also in the description box of the live stream brought to you by the fast meet and also next i would like to invite dr dayal darmasen the coordinator in the honors degree program of mathematics to address you all So good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Dr. Dayal Darmasena, and I am the coordinator of the Honors Degree Program in Mathematics. In this short presentation, I am planning to give you some overview about the BSc Honors Degree Program in Mathematics. Right. So as as Professor Sanjeev Pereira mentioned earlier. mathematics honors classes were started here in 1922 that means this honors degree program has a history of more than 100 years right so that's a brief history and then let's have a brief overview of our degree program right so in mathematics honors degree program the main focus is on getting some actually seeking a broader or deeper understanding about mathematics itself 
So basically, it is focused on understanding structures, patterns, and conceptual relationships that underlie in the core of mathematics. Right? So because of that, the core courses of the honors degree program have become courses in main areas of pure mathematics, which are classically, traditionally considered as algebra, analysis, and topology or geometry. Right, so the, the core courses of the mathematics honors degree program consist of those consist from those areas. In addition to that, you have some more optional pure mathematics courses as well as some other applied mathematics courses. So also you have a research project in your final year. In addition to that, in third year, every student who is Following, a, following an honors degree program in mathematics, program under the Department of Mathematics is expected to participate in a community service project. Actually, it is not mentioned here, but that is also a part of the degree program. Right? All right, so how do you get selected into the mathematics honors degree program? There are actually two pathways. So, Mathematics Honors Degree Program is open for both intakes, that means the physical science intake, as well as the industrial statistics and mathematical finance in intake. So if you are in the physical science stream, then you should be in a subject combination which contains pure mathematics. That means either P3, P5, or P6. And also, during maybe during last maybe last five or six years, we have observed that there are so many students who, who enter the faculty of science through the industrial statistics and mathematical finance intake, and then, we, they, then when they take one or two pure mathematics courses in first and second year, they find that they are more interested in pure mathematics than the other subjects. So we have opened a pathway for them to join to enter the mathematics honors degree program. So we are basically we are taking maximum 10 students from the physical science stream, subject combinations P3, P5, and P6, and also from the industrial statistic and mathematical finance stream. Right? Right, so these are basic eligibility and selection criteria, if you are in the physical science stream, you basically you have to maintain a GPA 3.0 for level, and level 1 and 2 applied mathematics score courses as well as level 1 and 2 pure mathematics score courses. And the selection will be based on the total weighted marks obtained for pure mathematics courses. So if you are in the industrial statistics and mathematical finance stream, so so you have to maintain a minimum GPA of 3.30 for level one and level two pure mathematics courses offered to that stream. That means basically there are four courses, three basic analysis courses and foundations of mathematics course. For those, co for those four courses, you have to maintain a GPA of 3.30. So here the GPA is a little bit high because you come with a less pure mathematics background. And also, you have to maintain a GP of 3.0 for level one and two financial mathematics core courses. And once again, the selection criteria is based on the total weighted marks obtained for pure mathematics courses. Right, so that's all about eligibility and selection. And then I just want to show a little bit about what what kind of things we are going to study in this mathematics honors degree program. Actually, we don't have much time to do that, but so I just want to say a few things. One thing is, so when you study mathematics, remember that the most important thing is understanding. I just want to show you a brief example of what kind of things we study in the mathematics honors degree program. So this is just something that I can explain you very quickly. Now, in the fourth year, you are going to learn that these two things are equivalent to each other. That means if you can do one, then you can also do the other. So first thing is, tri-secting a 
angle of 60 degrees using a compass and a straight edge. That means in singular, Kavakatua saha sarla dare bhavite koneak tunita bedima. And that is, and the second task is writing solutions of this given cubic equation using starting from integers and then by performing operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and extracting square roots. So these things seem, looks, they looks like unrelated to each other, but they are related. So if you come to the mathematics honors degree program, we are going to learn these kind of interesting things. Right, and then I want to show you a little bit about alumni. So once you follow the mathematics honors degree program, you are open to anything. So after completing the degree, you can either continue with studying pure mathematics or you can switch your direction and choose some, something else. You are open for anything. So these are some of our alumni. You can see where are they now. So these, these people have studied pure mathematics further and these are some examples of students who later switched their direction and moved on to some other directions in other fields of mathematics, different than pure mathematics, right? So there are some other alumni. So these are the ones who are going to... So most of our students, they get opportunities in foreign universities for further studies, and also some of them go to industry, right? So these are some examples of students who recently got opportunities to, for the foreign higher studies, right? All right, so that's, what, uh, that's all I have to say. So if you have any question, this is my email address. Okay, thank you very much. Stuti mati tu mani. Ese ma navatat sehipat kaliu tuhi. Obat yam gata luak etnam ganter departemen tu sambandeh. Sajiv Vikashe description hayati Google form ay haraha. Ima gata lu apavet idri pat kiri mata hackya wati bawat. Ese nam mail agat. Obawa amantra ne kiri mata. Thank you very much, sir. And also, for any queries that you have regarding the Department of Mathematics, you can forward us through the Google form, which is available in the live chat. Uh, brought to you by the FAST Media, the official media unit of University of Colombo Faculty of Science. Services is a newly introduced course by Department of Mathematics, University of Colombo. As a mathematics department, we are teaching so many mathematics courses to our students and our students are engaged with so many uh, mathematics research and project. But we want to give our students a chance to uh, learn about their responsibilities toward the society. Therefore, we introduce this new course, Community Services. Here the World is our community service project. For this project, we created audiobooks to the blind population in Sri Lanka. Ane, apy oyava kochchar hewad. Shu mal gode lassan. Kohendo yata me mal monovad me karane thaniyam. Punchi vadak. Here the world, apa yang apa itu ya, apa boh mas sar terkandar dengan situ kena lebuah. Iti mesra we granta haraha, drusha badi te prajawat eh kaya apa lebenawa, tawat kene kuge kata handin, memer sra we kruti sra we naya keran nete. Our project was decision for future. As all of us know, engineering would be a dream career for a physical stream student who select maths, physics, chemistry as the main subject. Of course, it is a profession with a well-paid salary and a huge reputation. 
But is it the only dream career that a physics dream student can dream of? Now, let me introduce our community project Perfect Place. When we first came to the university, we had to uh, find a boarding place near the university. Early travel was a big problem. So to address this issue, uh, we developed our community project. Someone may think it is really easy to identify a problem in the society and find a solution to overcome those problems. But it is not. It is really challenging and difficult to identify a real problem in our society and also find a proper solution to those problems. It is very difficult for our students to find a real problem in the community and identify a community with a real need and also uh, design a sustainable project to overcome those problems. Nearly 1.7% of Sri Lankans are blind. So, these blind people have only a few number of resources as study materials. So, these audio books are very important. After a long procedure, we created four Sinhala audiobooks and two Tamil audiobooks for the Tamil and Sinhala blind population in Sri Lanka. Mulla Patriya Siriya Vipara Mulla Nasruddin in Badi Aurodi Mulu Pair. It is Mulla in Badi Arinya Kalviman in Badi Kurikum Serapu Ademoliago. He were Turki Nati Jenda or Muslim Awa. The project Decision for Future which educate the A-level students about the degree programs offered from science faculties in Sri Lanka and the job opportunities available for them after completing these degree programs. We created the website that includes all the boarding details uh, to students attending University of Sri Jayawardenepura, University of Molotova and University of Colombo. After so many discussions and meetings, Finally, our students came up with seven acceptable projects and they worked on those projects throughout their third year. We have to tell you that 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 we have to as a mathematics department, we offer so many mathematics courses to our students and also our students apply their mathematics knowledge to solve real world problems in their research project. But as a part of a society, we all should be able to identify the problems in our community. Therefore, we designed this course in order to give hands-on experience to our students to identify the real problems in the society and also to develop sustainable solutions to those problems. We believe that our mathematics students can design effective and optimal solution to the real world problem because they think logically and analytically in different angles. Therefore, uh, from this course, the students can uh, serve the society in a better way. We can't continue this without the contribution and dedication of our community. So, we invite you all to join us and volunteer us as the responsible young generation of Sri Lanka. Thank you. As a human being, we all need help each other. So as an undergraduate, we can do more things to our community. So I warmly welcome you all to join with us to continue these projects. I invite all of you to join in hands with mathematics department to make a difference in the community. Heta, loko sevyak samaj ete venne polwa. Iting awashe venne, ad tani putgale ko awashe inho samuhi ka vekatu ella appe vaga kima loko ete istekarane ka. We invite you all to join with mathematics department not only to learn mathematics but also to learn your life and learn how to serve the community as a responsible citizen.
මීළඟට මාගේ ගෞරවනීය ආරාධනය ඔබ සැම ආමන්ත්‍රණයට ආචාර්ය අනුරාධ මහසිංහ මැතිතුමන්ටයි Next I would like to invite Dr Anuradha Mahasinghe a coordinator in honors degree program in applied mathematics and computational mathematics Thank you Okay uh, so I think uh, now you heard to a very nice introduction uh, to the <coughs> you heard a very nice introduction to the uh, pure mathematics program a program which uh, in which people study pure mathematics in dr dharma sena's own words it's the understanding of mathematics itself uh, but i'm here to talk about the other component or the other aspect of mathematics that is applying mathematics so studying about the subject of mathematics itself is normally done under pure mathematics in applied mathematics uh, it contrary to that we are applying the mathematical concepts to real world problems uh, so there are lots of real problems that we would like to solve Uh, using mathematics lots of problems that require the mathematical skills so i'm going to talk about two degree programs designed along that ideology uh, okay so these are two newly introduced honors degree programs one is the program in applied mathematics the other one is the program on computational mathematics earlier we had two different programs and they were replaced by these new two programs uh, as for the applied mathematics program Uh, it is mostly suitable for the students who are looking forward to do higher studies in mathematics related disciplines uh, so if they wish to do mathematics itself then i think the pure mathematics or the uh, math program is the best for them uh, but if you want to do something like let's say for example theoretical physics or theoretical statistics or even uh, some some fields in theoretical chemistry so there are lots of fields in the world that require the mathematical skills very strong mathematical skills uh, so this program is designed for such students so if you want to do uh, uh, anything related to mathematics uh, for higher studies after your graduation actually uh, right so this will be a very good program for you uh, but there is actually another door that is the major door opens to the academia and there is another door that opens to the industry as well Uh, so this is not actually an industry oriented program but this opens the door to the industry as well uh, there are lots of industrial problems that require mathematical skills uh, so we have paid our attention to those problems also so you can see the description says uh, primarily for this uh, for the students who are looking forward to apply uh, for higher studies you know uh, for uh, disciplines such as theoretical physics th theoretical computer science theoretical chemistry uh, theoretical statistics Uh, and applied mathematics itself right and also for the uh, students who are looking forward to join the industry straight away after the graduation and uh, so here's something about the intake uh, so we are having uh, 10 students from the physical science stream and as for the eligibility criteria uh, so it requires a gpa of 3.30 for the am courses and am 1012 that is vector calculus and a gpa uh, 3.0 for the pm courses so this is for the students who are taking pure mathematics as a subject in the first two years and the selection is by the total weighted marks obtained for am and pm core courses taken together but also you have to consider the vector calculus course uh, dr nayana wanasinghe is the coordinator uh, so you can actually uh, go to the website and you can write to her you can find her e email id and everything so you can write to her if you want uh, further details about the program and uh, something about the course content of the applied mathematics program actually uh, it is i already told you that it is for the students who have taken pure mathematics as a subject in the first two years uh, so it has a certain number of pm courses as well for example you can see there are some courses on real analysis topology right uh, so some pm courses are also there because it is actually an academic degree program and in addition to that Uh, you can see that uh, here is the math in work right uh, mathematical methods uh, numerical methods and scientific computing uh, so you have to apply the math i told you that it is actually for the both for the academia and also the industry so you have to apply the math at some point uh, so in order for the students to be able to apply the math there are particularly design courses such as mathematical methods right the methods that you have to apply and mathematical modeling some important courses like that and also uh, it has uh, these courses applied dynamical systems and discrete mathematics if you take a physical process actually it is either modeled as a continuous process 
or a discrete process, right? Continuous is actually, there's a continuum. So there's a continuity in it. Discrete means you can break it into small parts. So these are the two aspects of modeling. So you can model either as a continuous process or a discrete process. So I told you that the intention is ultimately uh, solving real world problems. So the modeling process is either continuous or discrete. Uh, so we are catering to both aspects. Uh, if it is modeled as a continuous process, yes, that then actually dynamical systems and topics related to that will be very important. So that is taught under the course. And if it is a discrete process, you are modeling it as a discrete process, then actually discrete mathematics is going to be very important. So both courses are taught under this program. And actually, you can see some statistics related courses are also there because this is called the age of, uh, you know, this is called the age of uh, uncertainty. So the, the early days, you know, the, the, uh, the old days, for example, uh, the medieval period, that was called the age of witchcraft. So the witch doctors were the people, the learned people those days. And then came the age of science, enlightenment, renaissance, and all the things, the age of science. And now we are slowly, we are heading off towards the age of uncertainty. Now un uncertainty is no longer considered as an obstacle. Uh, we don't want to get rid of uncertainty any longer, but we want to make use of uncertainty. So in mathematics also, uh, so we are, we are actually coupling uncertainty with our mathematical methods. Uh, so we want to do some, you know, uh, some things like we want to handle the uncertainty in certain ways, uh, we want to handle the uncertainty in smart ways to provide solutions to real problems. So such courses are also there in the applied mathematics program. Uh, if you go through the level four courses, so I have shown you the level three courses actually, but even if you go through the level four courses, uh, then you will realize uh, it is designed in a similar flavor, with a similar flavor actually, uh, intending to cater to the same purpose. So there are courses like fuzzy modeling, uh, stochastic calculus. A process has two parts. One is deterministic, the other is indeterministic. Uh, to, to model the indeterministic part, you, you need the stochastic calculus, right? The stoch uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, for example, fuzzy modeling. So it is not the ordinary logic that is applied any longer, right? So it will be fuzzy logic. Uh, so likewise, there are courses uh, with unconventional applied mathematics courses also uh, in the curriculum you can find, uh, designed particularly to cater to all the needs I have mentioned. One is you should be able to uh, go overseas to do your higher studies, and to do a math related program, right? And, to, and you should be able to perform very well. And the other thing is actually the industry. So you'll be able to solve the more sophisticated problems in the industry. And uh, here actually the, the BSc program in computational mathematics. Now this one is an industry oriented program. The major focus of this program is the industry. Uh, so this, uh, this program is actually a result of several discussions we held uh, one was actually how to cater to the growing demands of the industry. So uh, the industry requires lots of math these days. So they, they want people with very strong mathematical backgrounds. So are we capable of producing such undergraduates, uh, such graduates? Of course we are, right? We are capable, we identified the capacity uh, because we have the staff, we have all the resource persons uh, to cater to that uh, demand, right? Uh, so we designed this new program called computational mathematics. Uh, so we have already started that program and it's running really well. Uh, so here's a brief introduction to that program. Right? Uh, so you cannot do mathematics in modern world using pens and pencils, papers, those things. You need computers. Obviously you have to, you have to look into a computer at some point. Uh, you know, uh, in the industry actually, for example, the industry scale problems. These are very large problems. So handling large problems is actually of particular interest in this program, right? And they have to be handled using the computers. To use the computers, you need some level of mathematics. And that is what the industry was requiring from us. And on the other hand, the computer science itself, that also needs math. So uh, actually computer science needs mathematics, and mathematics also needs computer science. To apply the math, to solve the real scale problems, you need some computer science. And on the other hand, to do the computer science, to do the computer applications, you need certain level of mathematical rigor and uh, mathematical skills. So considering both aspects, we have designed this particular degree program. Okay, and, uh, and we have very, very strong theoretical computer science courses as well, because when it comes to the theory of computer, when it comes to the process of explaining what a computer is, that becomes mathematics, okay? And uh, so for the first time in our university, uh, we are offering theoretical computer science courses in our faculty actually for the first time. 
uh, and also we have a very very much applied and uh, practical oriented courses, uh, some computer science courses. Uh, so this degree is actually primarily it is for the people who are intending to join the industry after graduation, uh, but it is good for people who are willing to do higher studies as well. So that door is also open, we are not closing that door. So the major door, the, the first door actually, the big door opens you to the, uh, that will take you to the industry, but there is another door that will take you to the academia to your higher studies. Uh, so here's the eligibility and selection criteria. Uh, so we are taking 10 students from uh, the physical science stream, and it is open for five students from the mathematical finance stream as well. The eligibility for the physical science as usual, the GP value of 3.30 for all uh, level one and two AM core courses. And the selection is done by total weighted marks obtained for AM courses, and I'm, I'm the coordinator. Uh, you can go into the, log into the website, and you can see actually uh, in the website there will be more details uh, for further information. You can refer to the website, and also you can write to me. Uh, I'm happy to uh, respond to your queries. Actually, you can see that this is not just for the persons who are taking pure mathematics. Even if you don't do pure mathematics in levels one and two, uh, still the course is open to you. Right? So we welcome you, even though uh, you might not be doing pure mathematics in the first two years. Uh, this is actually a possible venue for you. As I told you, actually, CS requires lots of math. Modern day computer science requires lots of math. Right? As you can see, actually, uh, to, to apply mathematics, you want to apply mathematics. That doesn't mean you have to work something out using a pen and a pencil, right? And uh, I mean, a pen and a paper, right? And you are going to apply it. No, definitely you have to run some algorithm. You have to design algorithms, and you have to implement them, and you have to generate answers, and that then you have to interpret the answers. So that's how the world works. Uh, so we have uh, we have actually included lots of computer courses, uh, lots of courses with very strong computer science components. Uh, so that you will be able to apply uh, the relevant mathematics. Uh, for example, you can see computational methods, scientific computing, uh, database systems, algorithms, data structures, courses like that. And also here, the courses that I told you, Math for CS. Understanding what a computer is actually mathematics, right? That belongs to the realm of mathematics. And on the other hand, uh, we need to know the actual computational capacity of a computer. So those things were done by mathematicians, such as Alan Turing, Alan Church, people like uh, them, right? Uh, so we are actually teaching that sort of mathematics as well, theoretical computer science in the names of theory of computation and discrete applied mathematics. So math for CS and CS for math both are taught in this program. And here's math at work. So once you find real problems, you have to model them, you have to translate them to the mathematical language. Otherwise, you won't be able to solve them, right? And actually, after translating, you have to apply mathematical methods and solution techniques to them. So we teach you solution techniques as well, some mathematical methods, okay? And so this is, I'll call it the method work. So you are working out something using mathematics, and finally, you are finding a mathematical solution, and you have to translate it back to the original problem, and then, then actually you would be able to uh, explain the solution to anybody, you know, in, in that person's language. So the entire process, the process of identifying a problem that requires math, and the application, and the solution, right? The, the solution design, and the solution implementation using a computer, and finally translating it back to the original language. So the entire process is here in this program. The level four is also designed in a similar fashion as you can see. Uh, it has courses of same or similar flavor, and it has very sophisticated courses as well, like unconventional computing, fuzzy analytics. And also there is an industrial training component that you have to go through in uh, where you will get your first uh, industry experience, actually. So there will be uh, several industry visits, and you will go to those workplaces, and you will talk to people, and you will uh, develop your soft skills as well. In addition to that, you have watched that nice video about our community projects. So you will do one community project as well. So welcome to the uh, BSc honors degree. Honors degrees in applied mathematics and computational mathematics. If you have further queries, I think we have some time to discuss today. And also you can write to the relevant coordinators. Thank you. Stuti Matitumani, Navatat, Obita Sihipat Kaliutui, Ganito Department to Sambandin, 
ओबटे यम गेटलु अक्वेतोत सजीव विकास है डिस्क्रिप्शन ही आते गूगल फोन में हर हा इम गेटलु आप वेतो यम किरी मटे हैकिया पावती ना बावत ऐसे ना मागे में गाओरवनीय आराधने आचारे निलोषा करुणा तुंग मैतनी ये टे ओबस ऐमा आमंत्रण ये टे Next, I would like to invite Dr. Nilusha Karunathunga, coordinator in honors degree in mathematical finance and finance and insurance, to address you all. Good afternoon, all of you. Uh, I'm Dr. Nilusha Karunathum, a lecturer from Department of Mathematics. I would like to welcome you all to the Department of Mathematics. So uh, you already uh, learn about uh, the Department of Mathematics and other uh, three honors degree programs offered by Department of Mathematics. So I would like to talk about or give you a brief introduction to the other two honors degree programs offered by Department of Mathematics. So those are BSc honors degree in Mathematical Finance and uh, BSc honors degree in Finance and Insurance. So as you can see uh, in the name, so those two are uh, finance related uh, degree programs. Those two related to each other, but there are some differences also. These degrees are designed by considering the demand and also uh, the current trends in the industry. So first, uh, let's see a brief introduction to the honors degree program in mathematical finance. So this BSc degree with academic orientation is designed to provide theoretical, practical, and professional knowledge in the field of finance and actuarial science. So maybe you already know the term this actuarial science or maybe not. So actually this is one of the uh, major thing we need uh, if, you, if you are going to working in a insurance industry. So here we basically talk about that mathematics and also the statistical things uh, in order to compute the insurance premium and so many other uh, things related to the insurance industry. And uh, basically this is a research oriented uh, degree program, but uh, if you wish to uh, join the industry, so you can uh, get so many chances in the industry by following this degree program. So let's see how you can enter into this degree program. So we will take 12 students, but only from the industrial statistic and mathematical finance intake. So we will take students only from that uh, degree. So if you are following industrial statistic and mathematical finance, so at the end of uh, your second year, according to your first two years uh, results, you can get eligible to this degree program. So the eligibility criteria is if your GPA is 3.0 or more for all the PM courses, PM in the pure mathematics courses in your first two years, and also the GPA is uh, about 3.0 for all the financial mathematics courses and also MS courses in the management science courses offered by the Department of Mathematics. So if uh, you um, have these criteria or so these conditions, then you are eligible to follow this degree program. But then uh, we will do the selection to find the 12 students for this degree program by considering total weighted mark obtained from financial mathematics and pure mathematics courses taken together. So this is uh, basically how we uh, select student and the eligibility criteria for this degree program. So I will uh, show you so what is the course structure of this degree program, basically in uh, your uh, level three or the third year. So th these are the courses uh, we offer you in your level three if you get selected to follow the mathematical finance degree program. So as you can see here, so there are applied mathematics courses and also pure mathematics courses, financial mathematics courses. In addition to that, there are some enhancement course that community so services, what you have already introduced you uh, via the video played uh, earlier. And here, yeah, there are applied mathematics courses and also real mathematics courses. So uh, you may think why we need this uh, real mathematics or the, these uh, sorry, pure mathematics courses. Uh, 
if you are following this financial mathematics, are the, these uh, pure mathematics courses, that mean real analysis one and real analysis two, uh, those two courses are really important to improve your analytical thinking. And if you are planning to do your higher studies, these courses are really important to you. And in addition to that, there are some financial mathematics uh, and also actuarial mathematics courses here. Here you have the actuarial mathematics two course in, uh, in uh, level three, because uh, you have fine, uh, actuarial mathematics one course in your level two, and you can learn further in uh, your third year. And also if we uh, move to the courses in uh, level four, here also you have applied mathematics courses, financial mathematics courses, and uh, yeah, if you uh, see here, as you can see here, that actuarial mathematics three and actuarial mathematics four. You mean all together, you uh, will have four actuarial mathematics courses under this uh, honors degree program. That means you can learn so many things related to the actuarial mathematics. So if you wish to uh, join an insurance company, uh, if you want to uh, go in the path of the uh, actuarial mathematics, you can, in your bachelor degree, uh, itself, you can learn a lot of actuarial mathematics. You can uh, improve your actuarial mathematics knowledge. You can learn very deep things in the actuarial mathematics, even in your uh, bachelor degree. So in addition to that, there is an industrial training as an enhancement course in order to get some hands-on experience uh, in the industry or how you are going to apply the things you learn in the university uh, in the uh, real-world problem. Uh, likewise, so uh, that is why we introduced this industrial training uh, program in this uh, degree program. So uh, yeah, basically these are the courses in uh, level three and level four courses of mathematical finance degree program. And I am the coordinator of this degree program, so you can contact me. Uh, my email address is also in the website if you want to uh, know further regarding this degree program. So let's see the uh, next one, the BSc Honours Degree in Finance and Insurance. The coordinator is Dr. Kushani De Silva. And um, this is basically uh, that industry-oriented degree program. So this is designed to provide insight into insurance, banking, finance, and fundamentals of management in aspects of both theory and practical. You can learn uh, the theoretical part of those things and also uh, the application side of those things, that insurance, banking, finance, and also uh, the management science. So let's see how you can get uh, enter into this degree program. The intake is 20 students. So we will take 20 students um, each year for this uh, degree program. So uh, from physical science stream and also industrial statistic and mathematical finance from both the, if you are in uh, physical science or industrial statistic and mathematical finance in your first two years. And if you have the right uh, qualification, yeah, you can get eligible to do this uh, degree program. We will take 20 students. And the eligibility criteria is GP of 2.5 at the end of level two, that means first two years, for all registered courses, including CS courses, that means the computer science courses. Then um, according to your uh, GPA, so we will take the best 20 students to follow this uh, BSc Honours in Finance and Insurance degree program. <coughs> so let's see uh, the course structure of your level three. Yeah, here you have that applied mathematics courses, financial mathematics courses, and statistic courses, uh, management science courses, and also this community service. So it is uh, common for all honors uh, degrees in mathematics department. Yeah, as uh, you can see here, there are a lot of insurance mathematics related courses that uh, insurance mathematics one, insurance mathematics two, insurance market and products. That mean you can learn a lot of theories and applications in the insurance mathematics. And also in addition to that, there are uh, some economic courses and accounting. You can learn those things too. So if you uh, follow this degree program. And uh, let's see, uh, so what are the courses you have in your level four? Yeah, these are the courses, there are some case studies and also that insurance mathematics three in order to learn deeper into the insurance mathematics. And also there's industrial training. 
uh, and uh, that uh, six credit course and also industrial research project for other uh, degree programs as mathematical finance there are there's a research project that eight credit research project but here the difference between those research project and the research project offered for this degree program is it should be an industrial research project that mean you can uh, contact some company or you can uh, find a problem in where you are doing your internship or the industrial training, then you have to work on that. That means uh, the real problem in the industry as your research project. So basically those are the courses in uh, finance and uh, insurance degree program in level three and four. So we design all those courses by considering the current uh, trends and the demand in the uh, job market, especially this finance, insurance, banking, and those things. Finally, uh, I would like to talk about, so what are the opportunities you have if you successfully complete these degree programs? Uh, I'm uh, talking about the both degree programs, mathematical finance and finance and insurance. So you can get a uh, very good position, that means executive positions in insurance sector, like the actuarial analyst, actuarial assistant, and insurance underwriters, like that kind of jobs you can get. And also some positions in bank, central bank, and also other government and private banks, starting as a management trainee. Uh, you can um, go further in uh, those positions and also uh, some financial institute. Actually, not only in financial institute, maybe uh, in uh, IT industry or the uh, that uh, garment industry, in those uh, kind of uh, in sectors also, you can uh, uh, find jobs like financial analysts, business analysts, quantitative analysts, and risk analysts. That means you can use your knowledge in order to make that uh, business or the financial decisions and uh, choosing project and uh, managing risk of those projects, likewise, you can uh, do that kind of jobs in the industry. Not only the jobs in the industry, you can also, uh, even these are more uh, that industry uh, oriented, but you can uh, definitely do uh, your postgraduate studies, MSCs, and also the PhDs. So if you successfully do those things, you can uh, become a researcher or a university lecturer and also any other academic related positions. So basically these are, the, uh, these are some of the opportunities uh, you will have if you successfully complete these uh, degree programs. So I would also like to invite you all to join with mathematics department and to follow these interesting uh, degree programs to make your life better. And uh, I wish you all the best for your university life. Thank you very much. Stuti Matiniani Esena, May Sudanam, Obey the Ripatkara Gatu Sandaha, Pilitur Sape Matai. Thank you very much, madam. And now we are moving on with the QA session. Um, the first question that we have got is Aren't there any industrial oriented courses for mathematics subject? So actually, no. The reason is so the mathematics mainly focus on understanding mathematics itself. So that's the main focus. So there are no industry-oriented courses in the mathematics honors degree program. But of course, uh, referring to the that one, so the mathematics uh, honors degree program for. One different area, but if you are interested to do the industry oriented things, so you have a other option. So you have applied mathematics, you have a computational mathematics, uh, so those having uh, uh, industry oriented subject. Uh, the second question is what is the difference between A level poor maths and university poor maths? 
I think that is difficult to answer in few minutes, but okay, okay, how can I explain it? So, even though you call that A level pure myth is pure myth, it is not really pure myth. So, in A level now you do things like calculus, but you do not um, you do not learn how, why calculus works, right? So, but here it is just kind of there is certain procedures, but here when you come to the university you learn why calculus works. So, you, you prove everything. So, that is I think the main difference between A level pure math and the university pure math. So, actually now uh, to answer that question one needs so many time, but we do not have that much time to explain everything. So, I think that answer might be sufficient. Uh, well, the next question is, can we audit special degree program courses that we are not enrolled to? Yes, you can do, but uh, do not know whether now you are having sufficient time, because since uh, you, are, you are conducting the courses, and if you are not in, enrolling in the, that uh, particular degree program, of course, you have to enroll in the another degree program. So, we do not know whether now the uh, same timetable we are utilizing. So probably like that then now the we are cutting the courses so same time so you have other academic activities right so these are the uh, practically uh, don't know whether now it's possible but theoretically yes the next question what are the job opportunities in pure mathematics stream okay that's that's again another question difficult to if you study if you want to actually you can do anything So, you can either continue to study pure mathematics and become an academic or researcher or you may can switch to applied mathematics and or computational mathematics and move on that field. Now, with pure mathematics backgrounds, you have, you have a very strong theoretical background. So, with that theoretical, theoretical background, you, you have the opportunity to, to choose anything. Right, I think. I can also add actually I am uh, in the university in department for about last 35 years I think I am the oldest here so that uh, the uh, when I uh, joined the university there were no much uh, lot of variation of the programs only the pure mathematics mathematics program was there and then uh, I have followed that at that time and uh, uh, during that my uh, last 35 uh, or years career that I have been working in the industry, especially uh, even very strong uh, the pure mathematical background. We have followed that since we did not have any uh, opportunities at that time. We were enjoyed that basically the sub been working in the financial industry and also in various uh, other uh, areas uh, which is very uh, applicable because when you have a good uh, mathematics background, Basically, mathematics is not a subject, it is a kind of a skill. So that uh, you never forget or you never assume that if you learn how to ride a bicycle or something, then you never forget that. So in that way, you need to learn the skill. So therefore, not to cram all this stuff, but to understanding. So it will help you out throughout the career. Stuti, ma'am. Ganita department was Satua. Adena Kati to her Samagami was Sidukarana, Vishanu Badi the Kriakarakam, Rasakti Benava. Esena, Me Sudanama, Ganita department was Satu, Epsilon Delta Sangame Pilibanda, Obava Denova, Kirima type. Mesandaha, Mage Gauravania Arayuma, Epsilon Delta Sangame, Upa Sabapati, Tekshana Alaha Consoirata Saha, Banda Garika, Sujit Utsara Soirata. We are now moving on to the session brought to you by the Epsilon Delta Society, which is attached to the Department of Mathematics. And for that, I would like to invite the Vice President of the Society, Tishanka Alakon, and the Treasurer, Sujit Utsara.
good afternoon everyone <coughs> on behalf of epsilon delta society uh, department of mathematics university of colombo i am tishan kalahakon the current vice president of the current vice president of the epsilon delta society of uh, university of colombo and he is sujit tutsara uh, current treasurer of the epsilon delta society of university of colombo uh, let let us give you a brief introduction about the epsilon delta society and how it works and uh, who are we uh, the epsilon delta society is a mathematical uh, mathematics society run by the students of the Depart department of mathematics in university of colombo but uh, not only the students under the department of mathematics any students uh, in the faculty of science can join hands with us uh, if you are a math enthusiast uh, if you have a passion in mathematics this is your platform uh, in the in the uh, live YouTube video, we will uh, provide you a Google link uh, where you can uh, register with us and join hands with us. And uh, we will uh, briefly explain how we are functioning and what we have done throughout the last year and all. Now we have published our, uh, our Google form link, so you can register via the Google form link. Uh, and. Uh, this is uh, what we have done throughout the last year, and most of these things will be carried out in the near future. Uh, so these are we will explain it, and uh, if you join hands with us, uh, you can also uh, uh, do these things with us. And uh, this is our top board uh, last year. Uh, most probably within one month, the official duration of this top board will be uh, over and the next, uh, next officials will be uh, elected. Uh, and uh, these are some projects that we have done in the uh, last year and uh, we will explain what we did there. So Epsilon is one such program that we organized in collaboration with the Rotary Club of University of Colombo Faculty of Science to shed light on some of the misconceptions that there are within school students, uh, within school premises related to mathematics, especially the fact that mathematics as a subject isn't that useful outside of the classroom. And unless you are following a mathematics course, especially uh, it will be it, no, it won't be of that much use. So we want to show what higher level maths looks like uh, using some simple games and demonstrations inside and outside the classroom. So with the photographs, you can see that uh, the afternoon session was entirely conducted outside the classroom. And we conducted some games and quizzes for students to identify that it's maths, maths doesn't need a chalk and a whiteboard to uh, identify and see the patterns and relationships between the concepts that we use in higher mathematics. So we wanted to show that using the games and trying to come up, make them come up with the idea themselves about what concepts that they need to understand and do to win these games. So at the end, we received some really great feedback from the students and we also gave some information of how many branches you can pursue after taking a mathematics course, not just engineering. There are so many other branches. Mathematics is a vast subject. So we wanted to give that information to the school students as well. Yeah. Uh, and another project that we, uh, we, we done in the last year is that in, we conducted an inter-school mathematics quiz. Uh, this was an exhibitionary quiz uh, that we conducted on the Sri Lanka Maths Olympia award ceremony. Uh, all the uh, all the conducting and the questions uh, questions making were done by the members of the Epsilon Delta Society uh, of uh, Department of Mathematics of University of Colombo. Uh, we are we are hoping to uh, continue this quiz uh, even for this ne next coming year. Another event that we organized was the Open Day, which was uh, organized in the Faculty of Science premises. And in this, we installed several stalls where we conducted several games and quizzes for undergraduates of our university and outsiders as well, so that they can get an understanding of what mathematics is. So even if you are not following a mathematics course, this will be really helpful for you in future 
events and uh, events and subjects that you have to follow in in your future years as well so we conducted several games we gave prizes for the winners in these games and uh, it was a fun session overall uh, and uh Another main function of our Epsilon Delta Society is we provide students for international mathematics competitions. And one such competition is uh, the Simon Morris uh, Mathematics Competition. Uh, the second photograph shows the team of UOC representing Sri Lanka who participated in that competition. And among our uh, participants, uh, our current president of the Epsilon Delta Society, Ruimal Patiraja, was able to uh, being selected uh, in the top quartile of the competition, and that was a great achievement. Uh, if you are, if you are, if you join hands with us, you also can. Uh, we give you a training, and you also we give you a basic training that is needed to sit for such a, such an international competition. And you also can take part in such international competition competition if you join hands with us. Another project that we are currently working on is the DP Education Olympiad channel. So this is a YouTube channel you can search on YouTube. So we are discussing the past SLMC papers right now. So we will be discussing 2004 to 2021 so far. And uh, the YouTube videos will be uploaded for the papers soon. Some of them are already uploaded. And you can go through those videos and check the SLMC paper discussions done by our club. Uh, and you also can take part in these activities when you join us. And uh, mind twist, uh, this was a brain teaser type question that we conducted online using the online platform Kahoot. And uh, like we conducted it for like f uh, five weeks, five to six weeks. And we are also hoping to uh, begin the next phase of this competition after the intake of the new badge. And uh, you also can join. Uh, you also can join in participate in the competition and make uh, organize in the competition. So you all are welcome here. Finally, Epsilon Memes is a meme page carried out by the Mathematics Society Epsilon Delta Society from University of Colombo Faculty of Science. So this is a meme page that we started this year, and we expect to keep updating the page with more memes related to mathematics in the future year as well. Uh, and uh, another such, uh, I, I earlier uh, earlier told you about the Simon Morris Mathematics Competition, and this one also another mathematics competition that we take part in, that, that is International Mathematics Competition for University Students. And uh, these are two achievements that we have done, uh, that we have achieved in two con consecutive years, like uh, uh, our current secretary of the uh, society, Sahan Monandya, who was able to achieve gold medals in both consecutive years and uh, the, the last uh, before the last year we were able to uh, achieve one gold medal one silver medal and uh, six uh, uh, six honorable mention awards and uh, that was some uh, some of the projects that we have done through the last year and hopefully uh, uh, with all of all of the new faces coming into our society uh, i think we can uh, we can do a great work in this coming year. So we welcome you all to join hands with us. And we have provided you the Google link for the registration of the club. You can uh, register and uh, uh, hope to meet you all soon. And thank you. Thank you. Stuti. Esena, me sudanama, ada dine, devana adire, devana paluni bage, avasane, sanituhan kirimatai. Tavasualpa muhadikin, a hit devana bage at Samga Obahamu vime balapurutuen, mama samgana. With that, we come to the end of the orientation program by the Department of Mathematics, and next would be from the from the Catholic Guidance Unit of the Faculty of Science, and we invite you all to stay tuned with us as we are going to start that program in a short while.
Senam, Mayo Muane, the Das Visideka, Visituna, Adena Varshes and the Havana, Nam Naker and a Vedasatahane, Devana Dine, Devana Bage, Arambetai Dinan Dina, Dunu and a Lokaker, Urenura Gatti Meta, Yawane and Sudanam Kirima, Sri Lanka, Vishavidala Padatia Satu, Itamat Baharadura Kartavia Adena Katu to Sema, Wurthime Hekia one opening way mela, Sri Lanka, Columba Vishavidyalia, Wurthia Margo Padesha Ekake, Sidukarana Karebare, Sabavinma Ake Kotasalak Yutui Esena, Me Sudaname, Columba Vishavidyalia, Wurthia Margo Padesha Ekake Pilibada, then a Handura Ganimatai Magame Gauravania Aradene, Wurthia Margo Padesha Ekake, Achare, Dilushan Jasun the Matiduntai. Uh, joining with the orientation program brought to you by the Career Guidance Unit at the Faculty of Sands University of Colombo. And for the introductory session and the welcome speech, let me now invite Dr. Dilushan Jayasundaran. I wish to uh, welcome you to the Career Guidance Unit of the Faculty of Science Orientation. Uh, I'm sure all of you have career goals, career aspirations by now when you enter into this faculty. That is what you dream of being, what you dream of doing. Achieving your career goals is not only limited to your subject field that you are chosen to follow here. It goes beyond that. Your success, your achieving these career goals depends on your ability to network with your colleagues, with your uh, academics, and all others, what is in your professional circle, as well as your, ab your, your ability to lead teams, and very importantly, your ability to take responsibility. So all these are important factors 
in achieving career goals. All matters. And the Career Guidance Unit of the Faculty of Science is dedicated to guide you. We have, pro we have, we have, we have programs to guide you in achieving some of these objectives. And we are the only unit that serves all the students of this faculty. And so uh, we have several programs that is basically targeting to achieve all these objectives. These programs are not just for people who are planning to go into industry or business. They are for everybody, those who aspire to become academics, researchers, industrialists, as well as entrepreneurs. We target everybody. Everybody will be guided through these, the programs that we are offering through the Career Guidance Unit. And we also guide you to face challenges of the future. Not only the challenges, how to, how to be able to find opportunities where you can prosper yourself in your careers. So this is also part of it. It says future is actually for those who are committed and striving for excellence. Acquiring knowledge and skills where you will be where you will become a contributor to the society. So we want you all to be contributors to take this country to the next level. And we are here to guide you, all of you. So with that note, I would like to welcome you to this session conducted by the Career Guidance Unit of the Faculty of Science of University of Colombo. Thank you very much. श्रीलंकाश any questions or queries regarding the career guidance unit, you can forward it through the Google form which is available in the live stream, the live chat in the live stream, and also in the description box in the live stream brought to you by the FOSS Media. And for the introductory presentation, I would now like to invite Professor Chamari Hittiarachi. Thank you. Uh, okay, so first, uh, let me well, uh, let me congratulate uh, all of you uh, for being selected for the uh, best university in Sri Lanka, and also for the best faculty in University of Colombo. Uh, so by now, I think you all know uh, in University of Colombo, the Faculty of Science. So there are seven departments. Uh, so all the departments, they offer different uh, variety of academic courses, the special degrees. So but you know today, the world is very competitive. So your academic qualification is not enough to win the world. So the Career Guidance Unit, the Faculty of Science, so we prepare you not only with your academic qualifications, so we offer the variety of courses to improve your skills. So let me introduce the Career Guidance Unit, the Faculty of Science. So uh, what we are uh, doing for our undergraduates. Yeah, 
So uh, Faculty of Science, this Career Guidance Unit. So we are, uh, actually there are uh, around 40 uh, academic volunteerly involved with the unit. Uh, and we are under the Dean, the Faculty of Science. And we offer the several undergraduate enhancement courses as well as the academic courses. And all together, so we cater around 1,000 students in the faculty. Yeah, so um, myself and Dr. Dilushan serves the unit as the co-directors. And we have these uh, career guidance committee, the, all the members, all the academic members in the faculty, so they vol voluntarily contribute to the career guidance unit uh, to uh, actually in different capacities to offer all these uh, courses so that we offer under the uh, career guidance unit. And we have our vision. Uh, it's to guiding and providing the required resources to support career and life aspiration of undergraduates of the Faculty of Science. And our mission is to become a center of excellence to empower the students with the required knowledge and experience to mold, the, for, uh, mold and fortify their professional, higher education, career, and the life aspiration through a well-crafted series of events and program. And we conduct this session by uh, actually delivering the lectures and discussions, and we conduct different workshops, the training and capacity building, and some career advisors. So this is being done by the professional and experts in the relevant fields. So this highlights and it shows the different courses that we offered for different levels in the Faculty of Science. In first year, we offer two enhancement courses. The, it's EC1015, it's Career and Personal Development 1 in semester 1. So right now, so when you are in the faculty uh, in, this, uh, in next ma this month, so you can just register for this EC1015 course. And in second semester, we offer for the first year or the level 1 students E016. And uh, level two, again, we offer two different courses. It's uh, kind of the building up these uh, 1015, it's 2015, and in second semester, EZ2020. And level three, so we are offering three courses, uh, like EZ3015 and uh, this internship training in F uh, FS3001. So these EC courses are the enhancement courses. These FS courses are the academic courses. So it means that the credits that you get through the academic courses that will contribute to your GPA. Uh, so this, and also in level three, we offer FS 3002. And also under the career guidance unit, the faculty of science, then we coordinate a one honor degree program, it's science and management. So under that, actually we offer the four academic courses. So here it is highlighted two, which is internship training and industrial research project. So I will elaborate a little bit more about each and every course. Yeah, so actually we offer the different programs from level one to level four. Actually, all these courses has been designed uh, to uh, develop the different capacities in student. Like, uh, so level one we consider as this discovery. So it's like just, uh, it's discovering like uh, where I am. So then level two, then we are mastering, so your skills uh, from the courses that we offer and level three that we make you professional with the courses offer, so which we, uh, we are making you ready to face the uh, corporate world. For the level one, as I mentioned to you earlier, so we offer two courses, the EZ1015, it's career and personal development one, 
and EZ1016, it is the career planning. So through this 1015 course, actually, um, so we introduced that uh, uh, through that different concepts and uh, professional development. Uh, it is uh, to manage emotions, uh, to achieve the autonomy and this uh, uh, independence, and establishing the different levels of, uh, and identify the different uh, capacities, and also uh, uh, all these that we give you, conducting the several workshops by the professionals that we invited actually uh, from the uh, corporate world. So in uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, private sector uh, organizations. And um, so these are some highlights of the workshops that we have already conducted. And this course, uh, it's coordinated by uh, Dr. Thilini Pereira. Uh, she's from the Plant Sciences Department and Dr. Samira Vishwakula from uh, Statistics Department. It means that if you have any concerns and any problems once you are registered, so you can uh, contact those two coordinators. And level one, the semester two, so we offer this EZ1016, it's career planning. Uh, it is just uh, like, because then when you are in first year, so you wonder, so what you will be doing? So some of you may have already determined so where you want to be, some of you may not. So we just uh, prepare you so to the place or to whatever the uh, uh, career goal that you need to achieve through this course. Uh, yeah, so these are some uh, pictures so which we have taken from the previous year. So when we were conducting the different the workshops and uh, through this uh, course, then students allowed to uh, explore and access their career values and develop this occupational and this uh, 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 like occupational interest and skills and to identify the personality style and also the work environment preferences and also to motivate in specialization and the career exp uh, exploration. So this course is uh, coordinated by uh, Professor Inoka Pereira from Zoology and Environmental Science Department and Dr. Darshani Bandupriya from Plant Sciences Department. And in the level two, so there are two courses. First semester we offer EC2015 Career and Personal Development two. So it is the next level from the level one course 1015. And the second semester, it's uh, EC2020, uh, it is uh, Enterprises, Entrepreneurship, and the Innovation. Yeah, so, uh, so this need to find uh, its ways, uh, like uh, ways to stand out uh, from the crowd. So we prepare students uh, conducting several uh, workshops uh, during the semester. And uh, also then it's built, uh, uh, builds on the concepts which is already been introduced by the 1015 course. So it will further enhance us the aspects of this personal development uh, and outline uh, which was done uh, and also uh, which was already uh, you have uh, learned from this EZ1015 course. Uh, so this is one that uh, we, one workshops that we have uh, conducted to develop this leadership uh, skills of the students under this uh, EC2015 course. And this course is coordinated by this uh, Dr. Vindya uh, Kulasena from again, uh, Zoology and Department of Zoology and Environmental Sciences. And this EC2020, it's entrepreneurship, enterpri enterprises, and innovation. Uh, so there it's like um, uh, if you want to uh, start your own business, or if you have kind of less innovative ideas. So then uh, this, through this course that you will be assist uh, to develop that and fulfill your 
uh, goals and uh, whatever you want to achieve. So uh, this is like uh, actually it's designed to train uh, the undergraduates to develop the skills, knowledge, and understand to initiate a business, the manage their career, and uh, make the good decisions. And this course, it's been, uh, it's coordinated by uh, Dr. Dilushan Jaisundara, so our co-director, co the Career Guidance Unit, and he's from the Department of Physics, and uh, Dr. Devamini Halvatura from uh, Zoology and, uh, Department of Zoology and Environmental Sciences. And uh, so then uh, all the courses, courses that I have introduced up to now in level one and level two, so those are enhancement courses. I hope that you all are aware, uh, maybe not uh, right now, because today is the first day of this orientation program, because for you to graduate, uh, the one requirement is that you need to take, uh, or uh, you need to have four enhancement credit. Okay, so then through following these courses, then you can collect those for enhancement credit, because that is why it's called EC, it's enhancement courses. And this level three, so we offer these academic courses, the FS3001, the internship training, and then uh, it is for six academic credits. FS3002, the service learning for eight academic credits, and again, there is one enhancement courses, a course. So this uh, EC3015, it's uh, again the third level of the course that we uh, introduce in level one, the career and personal development three. So uh, this course we offer in the, in, during semester one. And then, uh, so there is a kind of, uh, in other two courses we offer in semester two. So then uh, if you want to follow uh, this internship training in which we offer in semester two, so you need to take uh, or you need to have the satisfactory grade for this EC3015, it is a prerequisite or it's actually it's a requirement. So if you don't have this uh, satisfactory grade for this EC3015, so you are not eligible to uh, follow the internship training. Yeah, so then this 3015, it's in uh, collaboration with the Association of Human Resource Professionals from M uh, Mass or MAS Holdings. Uh, so we conduct that. Actually, there will be 10 workshops. So all that it's conducted, uh, or uh, actually it's, uh, we uh, associate with this uh, MAS Holdings. So they are the one who conduct. So they are the one who bring the professionals uh, to uh, conduct those workshops. Yeah, so these are some pictures of those workshops. And this course, again, it's uh, coordinated by uh, Dr. Iroja Caldera from uh, Department of Plant Sciences and Dr. Sachini Amrasekara from uh, Department of Zoology and Environmental Science. And then this internship training, so we offer in the semester two. And um, so, in internship training, so you get chance to expose to the corporate world. So there are uh, different companies, the private companies and banks and some public sector organizations. So they are with Career Guidance Unit, the Faculty of Science. So uh, when you are selected to follow this uh, internship program, so uh, we actually communicate with them and then we place you in, uh, depending on your, uh, uh, like, uh, interest. Okay, so then, uh, so there can be the, the different, you can have different interests, like some of you like to uh, have the placement in management, some of you are in kind of uh, insurance, the human resource, uh, like different sectors and different interests, uh, depending on that, so we can uh, place you. And along with that, so there are many benefits get students. Uh, they can get uh, the work experience, and actually that may be the first time, so they get exposed to the private sector or the corporate world. So then through that, so they can explore their career path. And 
Also, they can connect theory and uh, practice. So whatever you learn during those uh, level one, level two, and as well as level three, the first semester, so you can apply your knowledge in your, uh, during your internship, uh, conducting a small project or uh, whatever the work assigned to you at that place. And also then there you gain confidence and uh, being with uh, the community or being with the other uh, uh, like uh, sec those se private sectors, so you will uh, actually gain confidence and enhance a variety of skills. Uh, yeah, so then these are the, uh, actually, here it is being listed, uh, the students usually, they, the field that they are look for, the management and administration, the finance and business, the marketing, sales and advertising, the education, social and welfare. And these are some of those uh, government and semi-government uh, sector partners who are with us. Uh, like uh, there are different banks and uh, Sri Lankan Airline, Insurance Corporation and Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Health and the Central Bank. And these are the private sector partners, the MAS, the Union Assurance, the Commercial Bank, uh, DSI, uh, these virtues are the uh, Sampat Bank and so on. And this course is coordinated by the myself. And then FS3002, the service learning uh, course, so it is for, again, eight academic credits. And in this course, actually, uh, we uh, collaborate with the private sector. And uh, uh, through this course, actually, uh, you can serve the community. So because then we identify certain problems uh, so which the community face, and the students go there and, uh, like, uh, uh, research, uh, the explore that the problems and research, uh, do research and uh, like help the community to uplift uh, their levels or uh, sometimes then uh, um, like it can be the uh, village or it can be a school uh, or uh, uh, different sectors. These are some uh, successful projects our students that have been already uh, completed. Uh, like uh, one service learning uh, student uh, uh, group, so they build a house that we call it the dream house uh, for a small, uh, like uh, we can't even think about that budget, how they have uh, managed and uh, build that house uh, for uh, one uh, poor family. Uh, and uh, there was another project, so then, um, so they uh, like, uh, went to the village and uh, like uh, they uh, helped the villagers to uh, like uh, for in agriculture and sometimes they go to the schools, the rural schools and help students uh, to improve their maths and science knowledge. So likewise, so we conducted many different types of uh, community service programs. Yeah, so this is that the dream house or this Sihina uh, Nivasan. Uh, yeah, so then those are the courses and uh, so I'll show you then uh, because I, I mentioned to you, so we also uh, uh, coordinate uh, on our degree program, science and management. Uh, actually through uh, being conducted many community projects and serving the community in 2019, so that was a remarkable year for us and we won two international awards. So it is actually, uh, it's mainly it's the, uh, the service that we uh, render to the community. So one is that UNESCO Venhui Award for Educational Innovation in 2019, and the second uh, award was this Asia Pacific, this uh, Triple E Award uh, for the Community Engagement uh, Initiative uh, in the year 2020. Yeah, so for the service learning program, so the, uh, here you can see, so these are the, our corporate sponsors. And also this is just to show then through these programs, actually we have conducted a survey uh, to check 
So through this uh, internship and service learning program, really it help our students to develop their skills. And you can see this in the, the blue color one, it is that the before uh, conducting the course and the red color bar shows the after conducting the course. So there are different aspects that we check, the uh, confidence and the self-assurance and this uh, acceptance of challenge and also this effective communication and effective uh, performances. So that all shows that there is a remarkable increase in their skills. And it, this, it, the service learning program is coordinated by these, uh, Dr. Samira Aryavansa from Department of Plant Sciences and Dr. Ayomi Vitarana from uh, Department of Zoology and Environmental Sciences. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the honor degree program which uh, we coordinate under the career guidance unit, the science and management. So uh, after your first year and second year, so if you have a GPA, uh, overall GPA 2.5, so you will be eligible to con uh, follow this uh, industry-oriented honor degree program. Uh, yeah, so here then basically we uh, give uh, through the courses, like there will be 50% of this, the science courses and 50% of these management courses. So we prepare the students, the science students with some management skills. <laughs> and through that, again, uh, we offer these uh, uh, industrial training, so that is for six credit, and a research project, it is again for six academic credits. And that course also, it's coordinated by the myself. So then these are the different courses that we offer under the career guidance unit. So I hope that you have some idea now. So we offer some enhancement courses as well as the uh, academic courses. Yeah, so not only that, so we are uh, actually uh, take hand to hand with some other uh, uh, societies and clubs in uh, Faculty of Science. Uh, it's that we offer this uh, counseling service, uh, like uh, so if anyone wants some help uh, in their the private life or any problem, so you can come and contact us. So we have this career guidance unit, uh, it's uh, in the faculty. And also we uh, like uh, collaborate with the, this gravel club, the faculty of science and the EI club. So you may be able to uh, hear these clubs and societies. I think there is a one of the day uh, in your orientation program. So I'm not going to uh, discuss or talk any details. And uh, so we have an annual event, it is Future Challenge, it's a career fair in collaboration with a Rotaract Club. And we have our official web page, so if you need any further uh, description or any information, so you can just uh, uh, like uh, check on our web page, the Career Guidance Unit, and uh, also uh, so this, uh, if you have any inquiry, so we can contact us, so through our land phone number, it is given here, and also you can write to us, so you can see this uh, via the email, and this uh, shows you our the website and the uh, Facebook uh, page. Okay, so we are there as a career guidance unit, uh, yeah, there are about 40 vol academics voluntary uh, involved with the career guidance unit uh, to make a difference in yourself. Thank you. Stuti Matiniani. Sehpat Kaludui, Wurti Margo Padesha Ekake Sambandin, Obate Am Gatalua Katna, Sajivi Vikashe Sidwana, Apage YouTube Nalikawe, Description Hiati, Google Form E Haraha, Obate Emma Gatalu, Upper Veta Yomkiri Mata Haki Bavat. Esena, Mageme Ara Dene, Asam Hassan Soirata, Obasema Amantraneta. 
I now invite Mr. Assam Hazan to share students' experience on the service learning program conducted by the Career Guidance Unit. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I stand before you today to extend my warmest greetings and heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you for being selected to the University of Colombo, the number one university of Sri Lanka, and getting selected to the number one science faculty of Sri Lanka as well. This is a remarkable achievement, and it speaks volumes about the hard work and dedication you have put into your studies. Now you are about to embark on a life-changing journey within this prestigious university. For those who may not know me, I'm Azam Hassan. I'm a third year undergraduate. In my third year, second semester, I had the privilege of participating in the service learning program, which was an eight credit course. Today, I want to share my experience with you all, how it incre incredibly impacted uh, my life throughout the period. As part, of, as part of the program, a team of undergraduates, including myself, was assigned to a corporate partner that faced a specific problem. This year, we had two corporate partners. One is Insta Cement, and the other one was the Commercial Bank. Namely, Insta Cement, which was, we were fortunate enough to get selected by the Insta Cement, the number one cement brand in the country, and it is the Sri Lanka's largest cement manufacturer at the moment. Our project revolved around optimizing their data-driven logistic application that they wanted to increase the efficiency and safety and save their profit and make sure to create a safer environment for their employees and to the Sri Lankans as well. Throughout this project, we visited their goal plant twice and had numerous meetings in, at their headquarters, at INC uh, headquarters, access to towers. And we underwent comprehensive safe driving training, which is, uh, which is a valuable amount of uh, 40,000, which they have done it for free. And we had, the, we had a good idea about the system they have used to uh, get into the system. So we had the privilege of interacting with their top management engaging in brainstorming sessions, conducting audits, and making necessary adjustments in their application. After more than five months of hard work and collaboration, we were able to save millions to the company, and we were able to save so many working hours and improve efficiency, and we were able to improve the safety of the application. This project served as a remarkable eye-opener and provided us with invaluable exposure to the corporate world, especially for students within the science faculty. It was a golden opportunity to work with such a huge engineering-based market, and it provided to be a transformative experience. This experience has equipped me with the confidence to overcome future challenges in my career. It sharpened my communication and leadership skills, and the knowledge I gained is truly priceless. Balancing my role as a full-time banker at HSBC and my portion in Force Media as the Vice President and this service learning project was no easy task. It required a careful planning, discipline, and realization that life isn't always easy. However, this experience taught me the importance of effective communication, the power of resilience, and the ability to adapt when faced with obstacles. As you embark on your own journey here at the University of Colombo, remember that you are starting from scratch. Your perseverance, your dedication, your consistency and discipline will propel you to new heights. But also keep in mind that your soft skills 
such as communication will open new doors of opportunity for you. I congratulate each and every one of you once again and wish you all the best on this amazing journey. And before that, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to, to the incredible FOSS Media crew for their hard work in making this orientation program a success. I would like to express my heartfelt uh, gratitude to the Career Guidance Unit of Faculty of Science, University of Colombo, for giving me this opportunity to share my experience with you. Thank you, and have a great day. Stuti Soira, Mila Gata, Obasama Amantrane Kirimata, Mage Me Gauravania Aradane, Nedni Lokusuria Soira Tai. Thank you. And next, to address you all on the students' experience from the internship program, I would like to invite Ms. Nitmi Lukusuria. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nitmi Lukusuria, and I'm a final year undergraduate following the BSc in Science and Management and also working as a business analyst at MTI Consulting Private Limited. So first of all, talking, uh, before talking about my academic background and all, I would like to thank the Career Guidance Unit for giving me this opportunity to share my experience, which I gained through the Sansa Management degree program and the internship that came along with that. So talking about my academic background, during the first two years, I was able to follow physics and maths as core subjects. Then throughout the years, with the various exposure that I got from inside the university, definitely thanks to the CGU and also the extracurricular activities, and also from the external opportunities that I was a part of, I realized that I'm more passionate towards getting into the corporate sector and that my traits per perfectly aligns as well. So when applying for the specialization during the end of the second year, and when I was looking into the industry-oriented degrees, I came across the Science and Management degree program, which has been offered by the Career Guidance Unit. And up to date, that's the most rewarding decision that I have been taken throughout my entire university tenure, which helped me to land in my current job as well. So the reason being is that this degree gives you the perfect blend of developing a solid foundation with the science background during the first two years and then complementing it with the managerial background needed by an undergraduate to get into the corporate sector for the next two years. Um, that's because this gives a top line appreciation of all the management concepts that you need to know when getting into the corporate sector. Hence, it would be opening you into a pool of opportunities available that ranges from HR, that is human resources, to finance, to project management, to consulting, which I'm currently engaged as well. So during the time that I had to do my internship, I got selected as a trainee business analyst at MTI Consulting Private Limited, which has been established as a boutique management consulting firm and internationally established as well. So during those six months, I was able to gain a massive learning curve with respect to consulting and the background that I obtained from following the core courses within our degree helped me and aided me a lot to be knowledgeable in all the required domains that we have to work in. Since my job was revolved around a lot around client management and project delivery, the soft skills that I was able to get through various activities within the university adapted me to the person that I'm today. So before ending my speech, I would first like to congratulate each and every one of you for getting into this prestigious university. And along with that, I would like to stress the fact that there are ample opportunities within the university with a pool of resources, such as an allied panel of lecturers. So make sure to grab each and every one of them. And on top of that, the CG of the Faculty of Science of University of Colombo will be a great source to develop yourself professionally and make yourself corporate ready as well. So on top of that, if y'all are having any questions, please feel free to reach any of our senior members, and we would be absolutely pleased to help y'all as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you, CGU, as well. And I would like to end this now, wishing y'all a wonderful evening.
ස්තුතියි සොයරිය එසේම නැවතත් මතක් කළ යුතුයි වෘත්ති මාර්ගෝපදේශ ඒකකයේ සම්බන්ධයෙන් ඔබට යම් ගැටලුවක් ඇත්නම් ඩිස්ක්‍රිප්ෂන් හි ඇති Google form එක හරහා ඔබට එම ගැටලු අප වෙත යොමු කිරීමට හැකියාව ඇති බව එසේනම් වෘත්ති මාර්ගෝපදේශ ඒකකයේ ව්‍යවසායකත්ව සහ නවෝත්පාදන සංගමයේ සම්බන්ධයෙන් ඔබට හඳුන්වා දීමට මාගේ මේ ගෞරවණීය ඇරයුම ආචාර්ය දිලෂාන් ජයසුන්දර මහත්මයන්ටයි a kind reminder for y'all if you have any queries regarding the career guidance unit you can forward it through the google link available in the live stream brought to you by fast media and to next explain us on the entrepreneurship and innovation club i would like to invite dr dilushan jayasundara Welcome again, guys, uh, to the uh, Career Guidance Unit Orientation Program. And it is a privilege for me to introduce the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Club uh, of the University of Colombo uh, to you, which is affiliated to the Career Guidance Unit. Uh, this club was formed as a result of the enthusiasm shown Uh, by the students i think it was in 2019 who took the course entrepreneurship innovation and enterprise easy 2020 uh, and in that course uh, i saw like uh, significant interest in students to know about how to start a business and some of them already had uh, i mean ongoing businesses so with that enthusiasm we thought i think we thought how we can expand this to all faculties and to all students irrespective of taking the course or not and uh, and another another uh, aspect of it is uh, uh, the idea of students to hang around in the university so you may ask why it is named as a club because we want to keep that environment at uh, that informal environment of a club so and for students from all disciplines to interact because when it comes to entrepreneurship uh, you know like you cannot limit yourself to one specific area of speciality you need to know your management you need to know your accounting you need to know about how to register a business the legal aspect of it as well as uh, the marketing the statistics so all that you re- you need to be uh, overall uh, you have to have some knowledge about everything so that's why we created this uh, club where with students and basically for students to interact interdisciplinarily so that you can uh, bring out good ideas innovative ideas uh, through the students so this is a student led club uh, created for students uh, so as i said it was uh, introduced in 2019 uh, Uh, we have the mission is obvious we aim to lend our aspiring undergraduates a helping hand and we give the resources knowledge and uh, the mentorship we do mentor you uh, in becoming uh, we have experience we have students we have expertise in the faculty we have expertise within the student body uh, who are already entrepreneurs uh, which will guide you and mentor you uh so this is uh, basically uh, uh the how the constituents of the club uh, we have different divisions entrepreneurship business development uh, social responsibility department marketing e-commerce and media as you can see we cover uh, almost uh, every aspect of uh, enterprise or uh, when it comes to uh, having your own business having your own startup and specifically we want you to consider what you learn in this in, in the faculty in, in your in your areas of field areas of specialities how you can basically learn the subject matter with the with the expectation of using it to build a society to provide jobs for others right the uh, the mandate or the objective of a university 
is not only to disseminate knowledge, but also to create knowledge as well as to uh, create entrepreneurs. And that's why some of the universities, most of them in, in the Americas and the Europe, are quite good at, and they are high ranked because of that. So we have uh, several activities organized by the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Club throughout the year. And to explain some of these activities, I would invite uh, one of the members of this club, uh, Mr. Anusit Hema, and he will uh, take you through some of the projects that we have carried out uh, through the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Club. So I, uh, I invite Hema uh, to come up. Okay, uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Anusit Helmala. I am the vice president for the term. Uh, moving on. Uh, so these are some of our projects that we have been conducted. Uh, this is uh, the Noyu IP rights. So we did uh, this project with collaboration with Career Guidance Unit and, of course, uh, MAS. So this one is to introduct in a, give an introduction towards IP rights and also uh, how uh, entrepreneurial IP rights works. And moving on to the Meta Plus. So this was uh, this was our uh, first place, uh, the first uh, Meta Plus that we held in last year. 2021, 2022. Uh, it was a uh, digital marketing <coughs> and digital media marketing and uh, social media marketing competition. It was uh, it was held as a at individual and team wise competition. Uh, it is more like a hackathon that we gave the uh, all the state uni universities and all the private universities as the uh, uh, as the chance to place, uh, compete in our competition. And also we offer them uh, uh, different cash prices, valuable cash, pri cash prices. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, so this was a, this was a, this was very uh, special uh, project that, that has been done by us, the year club. This was a, a project to fun uh, raise funds to the Meta Plus. And uh, it was uh, the general convocation. So we provide uh, uh, li these little ornaments and uh, uh, flower bouquets to the uh, graduates. And we go to the next one, Leave Only Footprint. This was a community uh, project done by us. Uh, this was a beach cleanup in Nigambo Beach. And these are some of the uh, projects that done by our different uh, divisions in our club. From uh, e-commerce section, e-commerce department, we did uh, an e-commerce workshop. It was about more about uh, Fiverr and uh, Upwork. Like uh, it was more about uh, self uh, solopreneurs and. Uh, and we also had this uh, digital marketing workshop series. Uh, and we had <coughs> Mr. Sean Moss and Mr. Tuhan Sapumang Sapumanage as the chief guest. And moving on, uh, we did uh, another uh, very special project with Brandix about personal development webinar series. And also how to, uh, how to work in the job market with LinkedIn. And finally, uh, moving on to the final slides, uh, this was, uh, we did these workshops in our, uh, in 2021, uh, which is in the pandemic period. So this was mostly done by the Zoom. So the first one is uh, role of basic sciences in innovation process. So this was mostly about uh, how innovation works in uh, science fields and the audience gathered how basic sciences transform knowledge into innovation and how they perform in the market. And 
also the other workshop was about uh, what is the key specs that you need to have in when you are doing a business, uh, how to collect funds for your uh, business and attract right customer. Likewise, this was our momentum project. And last but not least, we did uh, the confession of a solopreneur with uh, Mr. Sankar Hettiarachi uh, to discover pro uh, the potential about how to uh, be an entrepreneur only by yourself. That's what mean we what we mean by solopreneur. And also uh, another special workshop with Dr. Beshan Kulapala. We all know that uh, the co-founder and the director of Vega Innovations. And moving on to the ongoing project, Meta 2.0, the Meta 2 version 2.0. Currently, we are at the final stage. Uh, so we already have announced our finalist, and we hope to have uh, we hope to do our final event in the 28th of this month. So what we have for you? So we have mostly networks. Uh, we can, with, if you join with us, we can provide our network with startups, founders, members, university alumni, and many more from relevant areas that of your interest. We also can. Uh, we also have facilitated facilitated uh, and we have also helped to build startups and we also provide our help in the future as well and also we can uh, help with your business plans ideas and uh, and how to implement them and also we can help you to provide uh, provide funds to your startup and we can also we will be able to find resource persons as you need and Last but not least, uh, we can also uh, we can also get together and have a very special events to learn from uh, successful entrepreneurs, businessmen, and innovators. So that's about it. Uh, so don't hesitate to join with us. Uh, we can uh, you can also always uh, contact us by Entrepreneurship and Innovation Club Facebook page, Insta Instagram page. Uh, and the LinkedIn page. So thank you very much. Bohomistuti, Esena, Milagata, Mage Gaura Puraka Arayuma, Kolumba Vishavidalia, Manava Sampa, Kalmanakarana Ashe, Jeshta Katikachare, Achare, Drajita Silva, Matiduntai. And next, for the guest speech, I would like to invite the senior lecturer from the Department of Human Resource Management, University of Colombo, Dr. Rajita Silva. Sir, the stage is yours. Thank you and okay, right. Thank you and uh, I think good afternoon to all of you. And uh, I think this is uh, going to be another session. I think I mean I have shared some thoughts uh, even yesterday. Now uh, I'll go ahead with this uh, because this is about uh, actually your career guidance perspective. Uh, what I can say uh, because this is uh, faculty of science. I think immediately what uh, you had. Uh, is about uh, uh, you know entrepreneurship right now you can see this is directly connected therefore I would like to share certain thoughts uh, which would be helpful for you to plan out your uh, academic career like I mean in terms of uh, these uh, three or four years of your stay with the university and also afterwards what you should do right then uh, if you have any concerns uh, always I welcome you because this is your career you had to develop yourself you had to achieve your goals uh, first of all, I would like to uh, tell you, I mean, there are different types of people, right? Now, this is our outline, but anyway, there are different types of people. Like, I mean, theoretically speaking, David McClelland has introduced 
three types of people. First category of people we call uh, enact people, need for achievement. I think that is where, like, I mean, last discussion, which is about entrepreneurship, which means you don't tolerate leadership, you don't tolerate uh, rules and regulations, you always try to break it, and you go ahead with your own way of doing things. Just check whether you are that category. I don't think lecturer is going to be happy about it. That is one. Second thing, uh, you are very obedient, right? If somebody asks about, like, uh, what you can do, yes, I'm so innocent, I can uh, work under you. Under your protection, I can do anything. Now, that type of people, uh, for everything, uh, now these kind of people say, yes, sir, no, sir, uh, three backs full, sir, I mean, that kind of people. Then uh, just check whether you are under that category. I think you are a good employee to somebody, right? Then uh, you can just go ahead with that. And third category of people would be uh, enough people need for affiliation, which means you're looking at relationships, genuine relationship, uh, betterment of the society. Only example I can provide is Mother Teresa, because there are no hidden agendas. Uh, whereas, like I mean, a lot of uh, you now you can see CSR projects and all. I mean, you have uh, different hidden hidden agendas. But I mean, now I hope, according to my reading, like uh, Mother Teresa, do not have these kind of things. Okay. Now, then those are the three categories. But then here, based on that, I can move into this. Yeah. Right? Value, right? Now, how do you value yourself? Because first of all, you have to understand who are you. And your thinking process, your perception. Now, how do you think about yourself, right? Now, I hope all of you have your own value. I mean, you value yourself, what you do, what you think as correct, and you can just go ahead with this. Now, this is how you can generally focus on. Then. Today, like I mean, is uh, starting of your career with University of Colombo, Faculty of Science, what you can do, try to recognize what is your value. Because you are a uh, person I mean, who has completed your most competitive exam, possibly most competitive exam in the world, that is A-levels. Then afterwards, I mean, you got highest grading in Sri Lanka to enter into this wonderful place, which means uh, now you can value yourself first. Then if you have a value, you don't uh, destroy your life with different uh, unnecessary things because you know your values. Then with that, actually, you can see there is a concern. Like, I mean, if you just look at the point, uh, self-concept, right? Now, I'm not going to discuss about theories. I'm going to apply this in practice, right? Then uh, uh, self-concepts in the sense, how do you look at uh, different things according to your picture, right? I mean, then you, you uh, create your own mindset. In that, actually, you can see there are things, number one, self-esteem, valuing yourself, and also self-ideas, right? In that, actually, now you can see uh, what you actually uh, wanted to see, because there are people, now they have created certain things for the world, because uh, they have seen, now this is what I want to see the world in the future. This is the picture of world for me. Now, then you can think about it because there are scientists in the history, and they have done a lot of uh, inventions because they want to see the world in a different way. Now, just consider about it. Then I'm proposing to you with this, there are different kinds of people, right? This is basically for identification of yourself. Now, this is, a, I mean, available online if you just search. I mean, there are questionnaires also available just to find out who are you. Then you can see there are four types of categories of people. The first one is open, right? Open self, uh, because uh, what I refer to open self, everybody knowing about you, you are knowing about yourself as well. Now, if I ask you to say, introduce yourself, what do you think? Can you do that? If you can do it, like which means you are knowing about. Then whatever you say about you, if others also say the same, which means we consider you as under the category of open self. Then there are some people, now you can see, blind self, which means uh, you don't know you, but I mean, no, others are knowing about. Now this is also very dangerous when we are developing uh, career prospects. Because first of all, you should know what you can do. Others pretty sure that you can do certain things, but you don't know what you can do. I mean, just do assessment and you try to find out uh, what type of person inside yourself. That is very important. Then other thing is hidden self, which means 
Others do not know, but you know, right? Now, sometimes uh, you may be a wonderful singer, but others not knowing, but you are knowing because you are singing only in the bathroom, right? Now, that is, I think, not uh, that appropriate. I mean, then you can recognize yourself, and also, same time, you can just uh, let others know on what you can do, because you have to do a bit of marketing about yourself. Other one, I don't want to discuss about, because nobody knows who are you. I mean, you are also not knowing, right? Possibly, some of you, completely <coughs> depending on your parents, I hope uh, parents also around, uh, then, uh, depending on parents, and uh, then you uh, fail to recognize your own identity, then nobody knowing about you, you don't know who are you, I mean, that kind of people. Now, that is where you have to start now, because if you are going to stay in a university as well as in higher education, I think you have to have your own value proposition, which means why you are so special to this university, to this world, that you should know that. Then, when you are going through with this, now you can see there are different people with high level of self-esteem. I think this is why I'm going to have this. You should consider about this, because otherwise you will not be able to sell yourself, right? During this uh, three-year or four-year period that you are staying with university, you try to develop this, which means you are going to be a bit of extroverted, <coughs> which means you'll be, like, I mean, going ahead with people developing relationship, you are knowing about your limit, right? Then uh, you are not worrying about what others are saying because sometimes you can see you are completely depending on others and if they say something, you are trying to do it. I hope in, inside the university, first of all, you have to develop your uh, backbone especially. Uh, then you don't have to agree with everything because this is a uh, world of knowledge. Then you can develop knowledge and, and also day by day it is developing. If you can develop, you can challenge all of us. There is no problem with that. Then, now that is why I mean, you can have highest level of self-esteem in you. Then there are people with low self-esteem. Invitation goes to you, try to recognize whether you are in this category. Yeah? Then these kind of individuals, they don't believe. They believe so many other things, right? Some, sometimes, you know, Unlike other examinations, uh, university exams, like I mean, there are different kind of, uh, you know, measurements for your knowledge. Then what will happen? It could be a little stressful as well. Then if you do not have your own confidence, your own guts, then sometimes it could be a little problematic. I mean, that is why, now this is a starting point of your academic career with us, then you can generally develop yourself in that. And also, like, I mean, now, some people, actually, they, fail, they, they have so much of fear to fail. Then uh, what I'm suggesting, like, I mean, when you're going ahead with a career, what you can do, you can learn how to fail also. Why? Because you can see, if you consider about uh, fail, your favorite may be Steve Jobs. What has happened to him? He has been kicked out from his own company twice. That is a failure. But he... I mean, he is able to come back strongly and join with the organization again. I mean, you can just read and find out how it has happened and things like. And also, there are a lot of frust frustrations coming up, right, because of maybe failures and all. Uh, that is the uh, characteristics of low uh, esteem, where that you can learn how to get up and how to uh, get back to your own objectives of your life as well as the career. And also, now you can see, uh, you have to always, like, I mean, if you're thinking about a career and if you are just uh, uh, going through with your career prospects as well as ultimate objective of your career, then you can think about, I mean, you can feel good about yourself, right, about your achievements, what you can do, what you had done, maybe a bit of celebrations for your uh, maybe very minor achievements even, right? Then, uh, which means uh, submission of your assignments on time, maybe uh, maybe getting highest marks. Now, those are not easy in universities, right? Therefore, like, I mean, you can consider about those things. Now, that is why uh, what you should know, like, I mean, in order to have a value for you, now, you can consider about it and also your own values, right? Because you know, I mean, as uh, Sri Lankans, now one value that we have is uh, hospitality. I mean, we 
accept as well as respect uh, each and every person in the world, I guess, right? They accept us and we respect all others. Then because of that, what you can do, you can just go ahead with like, you know, recognizing your own value. You may be uh, different, maybe your punctuality, then uh, how do you like, I mean now, look at uh, risk taking and things like that. Uh, for example, our previous discussion, if you are going to be an entrepreneur with your degree and your career prospects, then you have to have risk taking capacity, right? Now these kind of things, I mean, you have to consider. Then uh, afterwards, you uh, clearly pitch what are your requirements, I mean, where you wanted to be. Uh, because here now I'm introducing another small concern. This is uh, very famous uh, across all the different types of, uh, you know, uh, study fields. Like this is about uh, needs hierarchy. This is not about anything else. I mean, just to understand human needs. Then you can see, first of all, we have uh, physical needs or the basic needs. Uh, basically, a human need, a human being. What are the requirements? Then. Whatever the career that you are expecting to go ahead, I think first of all, you should be able to satisfy this. Because sometimes you can see, uh, it is not about money, but it is about your survival, right? Then, uh, because you know, uh, certain cases, certain individuals, I mean, they are trying to get to very high level uh, standards, but uh, their basic requirements are not satisfied. Then what will happen? They ended up with frustration. Now that is why, you have to consider a career in future where it is sufficient for you and maybe in your f future family to satisfy basic needs. How do you recognize this? We'll come to that point, but you have to understand what is your market value, that is one. Whether there are any market prospects for your competencies. Now that is why like you have to see what are the basic requirements, whether you can sell it in the market, right? That is one thing. Second thing, now everybody expects some sort of a security, safety. It may be income, it may be physical. Then uh, love, belongingness, affection, right? These things and also respect, right? I think each and every human being expect uh, some sort of a respect because we generally recognize all human beings are political animals. Then actualization, because we have our own dreams. We had to get in touch with those dreams and go to the highest level of uh, your potentials. Now this is something, because you can see even politicians, now they start a career maybe in urban council, but they ended up in president's house. Now that is what actualization we are discussing about. You have to go to the highest level. Because you can see some entrepreneurs even, now they start with a very low level, uh, with uh, one person's uh, capacity, type of a business, sole proprietorship. But later, now they are going to be the controlling authorities of multinationals, covering many countries. Then I will be quickly looking to what is a career. You can see uh, anywhere, like anybody can engage with a career, but here it is about a kind of an occupation where that you can undertake. Uh, and you had to like, you know, uh, contribute to that particular profession for some period, right? And also through that, then you are creating your own value and your own progression. You can see, uh, like it may be any field, right, that you can have your own career. But I mean, you are into the faculty of science, which means now there are different departments and so you will be uh, getting into those. Then uh, based on that, you have to make sure that your value being created, established, and generated within that particular uh, department-related field of study. Now, how do you do this? What is the way? Because uh, so far I discussed about your esteem, uh, then your basic requirements and all, needs, and also same time I was looking at uh, what are the other uh, requirements that you have, what is the value, and maybe a bit of culture, like I mean all these things. Now, then how do you progress? How do you uh, utilize these opportunities? Now this is something that you have to consider about. 
I say now, when you come to university, there are so much of opportunities. Then first of all, I think first opportunity that you are going to get would be uh, accommodation facility. Not all, but uh, some uh, people with certain certain criteria, maybe hostel facilities to stay. Then maybe uh, merit rewards, right? I mean, or merit uh, scholarships, right? Then you will be getting a certain, and also there may be, I'm sure, ample uh, amount of opportunities available in the faculty as well. And also, like, I mean, so many other things, like, I mean, you can work with wonderful set of people. I mean, you are lecturers and who are, like, I mean, comprehensive researchers. Then where that you can start your work with them. There are so many other practitioners as well. Then understand, now, these are the opportunities for you to understand, uh, like, your career prospects. And also a lot of information, I think, uh, more than the social media, that you have so much of information available online where that you can recognize not only local, uh, even internationally, where I can pitch yourself in another five to 10 years time. Now that is where like, I mean, you can consider about your uh, career. Now understand where that you have to start, where that you have to proceed, what is the end result, what are the opportunities, how you achieve them, which means your strategy. Then when you are going ahead with that, now you have to consider first of all, personality profile. What is this? Personality means basically, if I simplify, because there are heavy definitions available, but I just wanted to, uh, you know, cut down to understandable form, just two things. How do you react or how do you interact with others? Because there are different instances. Now, let's say uh, success of exam, how do you react on that? And also failure of exam, how do you react on that? I mean, that depends on mm -hmm. the particular person's personality. Now, that is what uh, the theoretical perspective you can see. When you have to recognize in the field that you are going to uh, take up your career, what type of personality is expected, right? Then uh, that is very important, what type of personality? Because uh, most of the researchers now they are indicating personality is one of the major factor which is uh, constraining the career prospects. Because you have to understand what is your profile, what is your personality, what is the personality which is required by that particular field of work. Let's say now if you are a news reader, let's assume, right, what type of personality? Right? That is very, very important for you to recognize. Then if it is ma match, that's fine. If it is a mismatch, there is no prospect for you to develop that as a career. Because it is just a job. I think you can see it's, a, it's just a job. Right? I mean, just You do it and then you finish it off, get your salary and go home. I mean, there is no development, nothing. Right? Now that is something that you have to generally consider about. Right? Then you look at how do you de uh, develop your personal profile? I, think, I mean, you can do this. Uh, I mean, after this session, maybe you, I mean, after all the sessions today, like, I mean, you can undertake this uh, developing your personality profile, which will be useful for you to develop your uh, career, uh, what you call CV as well. Then you can see there are a few things. Uh, now, uh, I have indicated, I'll explain a few things for you to think about. Um, now you can see introversion and extroversion. There are different types, but I mean, I'm just saying a couple of things only. Uh, introversion in the sense, uh, uh, understandable form, I can say, very dull type of people, because uh, I mean, they don't have friends, uh, they are isolated and all. Then think, what is the career that you are looking for? Whether you can consider about this type of personality. If it is okay, that's fine. Because if you are an uh, intelligence officer, maybe yes. But if you are going to work with people, definitely you have to be extroverted. Then how do you develop it? You have to develop if you are undertaking your career uh, in that sense, right? Then uh, same time, I mean, you can see sensing, thinking, like, I mean, how do you uh, feel about different things and all. Now, then in that case, now you can see uh, you have to undertake your career in terms of where that you are comfortable. What is your interest? Now, that is ve very, very important. Because if somebody doing it, according to his personality, that could be perfect. 
but it may not be suitable for you. But I, I, I don't know, like, I mean, now, why and how? Because I came across with somebody, because uh, now that particular individual, uh, he wanted to uh, go ahead with one field of study where that it is not his interest. Then what has happened? Uh, his parents were pushing him to go and get that uh, particular uh, kind of uh, field of study because their expectation was to push him to that particular career or profession. Result, he was completely misled, completely lost himself. In result, he's supposed to say bye to his life. Now that is why I mean, you have to do something which is comfortable for you. You think it is within yourself where that you can add more and more value and also where that you can develop your competency to cater to the demand that you have in your life. I think needs you have recognized already. Then you have to understand why you are just working, right? Whether you are just working just to get a salary, right? Or else, whether you wanted to make a mark uh, in the history or in the field, or you wanted to add any knowledge into the field, right? what you really wanted to do, why you are going to work. Now, that is the second thing that you have to consider. Because uh, you can start this particular dreaming from today itself. Now, that is a requirement. And also, you have to consider what is your environment, right? Because that is very important, I think I told you, like university, now there, it is a different environment. It's a, basically a learning culture, each and everything, directed to some sort of learning. You, you know, I mean, you are discussing with a lecturer, you are discussing with a student, your colleague, everything amounted to learning, where that you can make use of it. Then, apart from that, what type of activities that you have to undertake? Is, uh, I think uh, now, for example, now you can see uh, some people. I mean, they are they are going ahead with uh, social media. How many how many hours that you are spending? Because uh, when I was asking one uh, one student about how many hours that you are spending with social media, answer was 14 hours per day. What do you think? Yeah, then I was clueless. Like, why 14 hours? Then uh, after a few minutes, is it okay or not? I mean, we can ask from your lecturers. Is it, is it good or bad? Bad. Very bad. Then what has happened? He just came up with his uh, account. Bank account. Then he was uh, showing me, like, I mean, uh, last week how much he has earned. Okay, what do you think? How much? Then, because, you know, like, he was doing it with a purpose, right? It was over one million earning that he was having within a week. I'm failed. <laughs> right? Now that is why, because he is doing it with a knowledge, why he is doing it, what is the type of activity, right? That is something that you have to generally consider about. That is going to be extremely important. <coughs> then if it is a field of study or a career, what is the contribution? Now you can see, if you consider about in Sri Lanka, it's a veteran, I guess, uh, Publis. I think you heard about. Uh, he is the most uh, famous chef who is getting the highest salary in the particular organization overriding the CEO's salary. What do you think? What is the contribution he has done to the society? Introducing different kind of recipes, different type of thinking, and all these. Now that is why. What is the contribution that you are going to undertake? And also, how do you manage your time? Because everywhere that you have to consider about balancing your activities, your time, and everything. Now, that is very important. Because otherwise, what will happen? We, I mean, a lot of organizations now, they need uh, people, not a machine. Right? That you have to understand this. Because there are certain organizations, according to their work schedules and all, right? then it is leading to create a machine rather than a person. Uh, but when you consider about uh, Faculty of Science, University of Colombo, actually it is uh, very much creating a scientist. I mean, who is a person, right? That people value is very important. Because good old days we were thinking in terms of uh, uh, environment and marketing perspective, customer as the most important. In general, we were saying customer is the king. But now it is out. What we generally consider now, happy employee create happy customer.
Now that is why organizations start valuing uh, their own people. And also same time, now you can understand like, I mean, different things and how do you get the result? It is not hook or crook. Now you have to understand this because you are in the faculty of science which means there is a mechanism, there are value addition processes. Now that is why when you are doing a career, like I mean, you have to create your own value because you are going to be a product of University of Colombo, Faculty of Science. Now it is uh, more than 100 years of uh, history. Now because of this, you have to take up this uh, particular challenge and also you have to create that value for the uh, institute. And same time, how do you manage different challenges? Because you know it is very challenging environment. Uh, that is why I told you initially, you have to learn how to fail and get up out of that. Now that is a way that you can understand your career. And also same time, what are your limits? What type of interactions that you can do? Right, now for example, now if you are just going ahead with, with whom I mean, that you had to generate or go ahead with the relationship? Because you know I mean, there are enough people in the society as well as different organizations. Because I told you, everywhere, whatever you do, I mean, there should be some sort of a value addition. Just think, what can be placed in your CV? If it is the case, you can undertake that, right? Now, these are very important, I guess, for you to consider when you are going ahead with this uh, university career. Now, think about, right, what are the valuable activities? What are the activities that you can postpone? What are the activities immediately you have to attend? Now, if you do that, you never be a failure. You'll be uh, successfully completing your degree as well as pursuing your prospective career as well. Now, this is other side. How you wanted to see people looking at you? Are you a leader? What is the difference between leader and a manager? Because you can see, leader is a person who can influence others. Manager is a person who can undertake general managerial activities. Just consider whether you wanted to become a leader or, the, or a manager. Because you can see, like I'm a famous uh, scenario that I would like to explain uh, from the school perspective. What do you think? Uh, like, how do you call a principal when in front, uh, he is in front of you? You normally call him, possibly, a sir. When he is not there, now how do you speak to him? How do you call him? Shall we ask from audience? How do you call sir? Pina, right. Now then you can see whether that principal is a leader or a manager. Because he's, when he is sitting down in his seat, what will happen? He is a principal. When he come out, according to you, sir, he is Pina. Now what do you understand? Now you can see whether he is a leader or not. One of the very, uh, very close uh, kind of a school, now it is not only Pina, it is Patholia. Right? That is also very interesting. Now you can see this. Okay. Uh, don't worry, like, I mean, if you are also calling uh, your principal Patholia. And also your decision making. Whether you are a decision maker, because you can see some people now they are not taking decision. They are just passing the decision. Because, I mean, I can remember after completing the degree, not from science faculty, some other faculty, management, uh, when I started uh, my career job in terms of uh, uh, one company as a management trainee, what happens? The first lesson that I learned is, uh, learned from my manager, was if you come to a situation where you have to take a decision, just pass it. Now, what do you think? You can do that. I mean, that is why, uh, you, whether you wanted to see that you as a decision maker. Because you can see in the field, general environment, there are decisions to be taken. Some people, they are not taking those decisions. They are not making those decisions. Then, whether you are capable of resolving any kind of a conflict that you are experiencing, whether you can uh, entertain those uh, situations as well as, uh, and, and you can com like comprehensively settle those conflict. And also, understand your strength. Now I call them as best assets. What are your best assets? Right, maybe your knowledge. Some people, I mean, they are best, best assets going to be their head, hands and legs only. But they can utilize them and they can come to 
their dreams easily. Now that is what I would like to tell you. Now these are certain skills, right? Then uh, take a small uh, sheet and you can uh, uh, start doing this. Like I mean, try to recognize what are your strengths. What are things so far during this 18 to 19 year period, what you have developed within you, right? Maybe competencies, capacities, your attitudes, maybe your skills. Now all these things you can recognize. And also, you can, uh, you know, rate your capacities and your attributes, whether it is excellent, whether it is good, whether it is average or whatever. Then you have to be realistic, right? Then this is very important, right? Because there are some people now they can dream about, some people make them realities. I think uh, you heard about uh, certain uh, authors. Now, if you consider about Arthur C. Clarke, he was dreaming about, you know, going out of this, uh, you know, our earth. But somebody made it a realistic uh, scenario of, uh, like, his thinking. Now, that is why sometimes people can think, people can dream, some people can make them realities. Now, just think whether which, which category that you wanted to be in. Next one, I mean, you can see how you can get uh, or how you can reach or how you can uh, consider evidence of higher scores, right? Which means <clears throat> now if you are in the average, how you can come to the highest level? Because you know, uh, some of you actually, I mean you have taken up your studies in A-levels in uh, uh, native language, maybe Sinhala or Tamil. Then now uh, when it comes to university, you have to undertake all your studies in English then this may be obstacle. Like you have time uh, in the sense like, I mean now, uh, when you are going ahead with your first uh, semester examinations, until then you have time and you have to take a challenge, you have to develop yourself, you have to plan out how you can uh, get that language competency because you have to write your answers where that assessor, examiner can read and understand. Then if you write, very nice answer where that we cannot understand. Unfortunately, you have to see the examiner again. No, I think that is not good, right? Then you have to have some sort of activity, some sort of way of doing what you call strategies to go for your dreams. And also same time, average people. You know, I mean, there are enough amount of average people. That is why you have to create your Value proposition, because organization look at employee value proposition. Why these employees are so special? They recruit only important people, not just people with uh, average results. Then if you are just going out of the university, you have to make sure your earnings, you have to attain your maybe class, your experience, uh, your credentials, your name in the field that you are engaged with, now these things are very important. Not just average, complete in the degree and going out. And also, uh, I will suggest with, uh, um, um, I mean, all other different academics as well as researchers, uh, then you have to understand what is the kind of job that you are looking for, what, what kind of career that you are looking for, Right? What type of jobs or what kind of uh, careers that you have to avoid? Because you know, I mean, who are you? What are your capacities? Based on that, you can select your best. It may be not only within the country, it may be away from the country as well. Then uh, you can consider about, yes, uh, those aspects in general. Now, these are going to be the most important, I would say, uh, in terms of this uh, particular concern. Please consider this. And today, I would like to tell you, before we wind up, a couple of things to take up. First of all, assess yourself where that you are standing today, because this is the entry point to the University of Colombo Faculty of Science. Then, where that you wanted to see yourself in another, maybe five years time, as well as 10 years time. What is your dream? Then long term, maybe another, further years of time, maybe 20 years or whatever, what should be your picture? What should be your uh, presence in the world? And then what are the activities that you have to undertake to go ahead with it? If you can place out all these things, 
then you can fit yourself for the particular career as well as your degree program. That will definitely make sure that you are away from your stress, that will make sure that you are achieving your dreams without any obstacle. Thank you so much and good luck for your career with University of Colombo Faculty of Science. Thank you. Well, we are now moving on with the Q&A session. Um, the first question is, do three-year general degree holders also get an internship training? Yes, I think uh, I have already shown you this FS3001. So that is for a three-year general degree student. The second question is, maybe in future, if I get selected for special degrees, how do we apply for internship? Mm. So actually, the for special degree students, uh, uh, if it is a research-oriented uh, special degree program, so. Uh, in the curriculum, so we don't have internship uh, uh, like uh, for them. Uh, but then for all these uh, industry-oriented uh, uh, honor degrees, so there is a uh, internship uh, program, so they can follow. Um, if I choose career and personal development one course as an en enhancement course, is it compulsory to do career and personal development two? Yeah, it is not necessary. So you can, uh, like, the thing is, like, if you follow uh, all three courses, then uh, you, get, you get lot of uh, uh, experiences. But it is not necessary to do a uh, second year course. So you can just uh, do the one and one first year, first year course and uh, exit. The next question is, are these courses compulsory for us? Will these courses affect to our GPA? Yeah. So uh, actually, these are the enhancement courses. Uh, as I mentioned to you, so during that introduction, uh, so you need a four enhancement credit to graduate the uh, to graduate. Uh, so the enhancement courses credit will not affect to your GPA. Uh, but then uh, this uh, ca career guidance, we uh, offer the academic courses as well. So that will also, that will uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, uh, we use that uh, to, uh, for your GPA, like we use that to calculate your GPA. What are the differences between service learning and internship training? The internship training actually, so we place students in the private and uh, public sector. Uh, so it is kind of uh, that individually you need to uh, like uh, follow that. But in the service learning, so it's a group activity. So when you uh, follow the service learning, so we group the students like usually six or eight students in one group. Then we, uh, uh, depending on the requirement from the corporate sector, so uh, when we identify certain problems, uh, and especially then what are the problems that they forward to us uh, to serve the community. So you need to, uh, like uh, if you have already uh, listened to the, that uh, one of our students that he shared his uh, experiences, as a group you need to work for this service learning project. But internship, it's like, it's kind of individually, you need to do that. Is there a maximum number of credits on enhancement one can get? 
No, like, uh, so if you, uh, I think you can get many, it's not a problem, but at least you need to have four. Um, the last question, ma'am. What are some example internships I can get as a biochemistry and molecular biology student? What are the medical companies we collaborate during the internship and career guidance programs? Uh, yeah, for these biochemistry and molecular biology students, so we offer actually uh, tomorrow that you will uh, get this uh, chemistry department orientation. So under that, so we, uh, uh, under the department of chemistry, so we offer this molecular biology and biotechnology industry oriented program. So there then uh, whoever the students that follow that uh, honor degree program, so we'll get a chance to uh, place in the industry. So uh, we collaborate or we affiliate with these uh, Durden's Hospital and also this uh, Medical Research Institute and Government Analyst Department. Uh, and the, uh, so those are mainly, uh, so we place the students uh, who comes under Biochemistry and Molecular Biology for the internship program. Stuti Matiniani. Esena, Columbia Vishavidyalia, Burthia Margo Padesh, Eka Gavenuin, Oba Sama Amantraneta, Marge make Gauravania Arayuma, Karishini Vijay Singha Menaviata. For the closing remarks and what is thanks of the session brought to you by the Career Guidance Unit, I now invite Ms. Karishini Vijay Singha, Coordinate Associate from the Career Guidance Unit of the Faculty of Science. Good afternoon, everyone. I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to the co-directors of the Career Guidance Unit, Professor Chamari Hetty Arachi and Dr. Dilushan Jayasundara, and our Career Guidance Committee for their immense contribution in organizing this event. I would also like to thank the guest speaker for today, Dr. Rajita Silva, for sharing his valuable knowledge, and the two past students, Mr. Azam Hassan and Ms. Nethmi Lokasuria, for sharing their experiences with us. Further, I'm thankful to all the freshers who are about to begin their undergraduate career at the Faculty of Science for joining this session. Also, last but not least, I would like to thank FOSS Media for covering this event and assisting us with the technical aspects. We believe it was a valuable time spent learning the variety of services provided by the Career Guidance Unit. And we hope that you will join hands with us to enhance your academic experience towards achieving the desired future at the end of your university career. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Stuti, Esena, me Sudanama, Dedas visit deca, visit Tuna Varshas and the Havana, Columba Vishavidali of Vidya Pite, Nam Nikar and a Vedasatahane, Devanadine, Avasane, Sani to Han Kirimatai, Devanadine at Samagarandi City Mata Obata Aradana Kerami, Upper Samaganam, Oba Samata Stuti. And with that, we close the proceedings of the day two of the orientation program for the new intake of the Faculty of Science, University of Columbia. And we invite you to join with the upcoming orientation program brought to you by FOSS Media, the official media unit of the University of Columbia, Faculty of Science. Thank you and have a pleasant day.